Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the Every FNF podcast. I want to welcome my guest today, these three dudes that you don't know yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we did dress up as Moogles for Halloween when we were streaming this really? game. I was just looking for my headband. I'm oh, wearing yeah. like a Moogle hoodie today. I could be you Moogle. You are. Like this. Yes. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> Moogle drip. Yeah, it's funny. On top of my thing, I have a Kate Sith uh, oh, yes. wig. And, yeah. Oh, this. that's perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have anything cool, but not really. I have, oh, I have some FF9 shit. <laughs> I have so much cool Final Fantasy cool stuff. Beatrix. Cool Beatrix. Cool. Final upstairs. Fantasy nerds are supposed to be like making a podcast, but we're just like on Discord showing each other our, like <laughs> Final Fantasy merch. Nerds calm down. Nerds get ready. Nerds lock in. It's the Every FNFF podcast. <laughs> I'm Curtis. I'm Carl. I'm Alex. And I'm Heather or <gasps> Mixass <Mixed> Blast. <gasps> I'm Nina. <gasps> <gasps> double feature. <laughs> yes, double feature. Incredible. Big mood. Big mood. Unprecedented. Uh, I know. Hi. First time ever. A power never before seen. How many characters are in our party right now? Uh, more than five. Oh, all right. Wait, more than five? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I guess in yeah in the game. Well, Kimari's not there, right? We'll get Sarah quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's working. She can probably. She. We just had off a full week. I'm sure she can just duck out for like three hours to record this podcast. <laughs> it's just currently fighting a boss in another room. I tell you what, <laughs> exactly. I I had a. Uh, I had some like McDonald's earlier for lunch, you know, and I was just kind of like, oh, my tum. And I feel like right now I'm just a bastard. So I would be like the walk of the party right now. <laughs> just, just an absolute sack of crap. Farting everywhere. <laughs> Farting yeah. all over. The way Walker Our emotions. does. emotions. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is our first double guest uh, episode. Heather and Nina are both game developers, if I'm not mistaken, and mm -hmm. streamers. I think everyone's a streamer this year because everyone's just... <laughs> <laughs> because of the world right now, it's the only way to Because gestures like vaguely everywhere, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all of your friends from high school are like, yo, uh, just found out, uh, found out about this thing called Twitch. I'm going to stream some uh, some video games and then abandon it after a week when they realize no one watches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like me. I kept it up for a long time, even though nobody watched. <laughs> exactly. Same here. <laughs> Streaming just be like that at the beginning sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. tough. You got to do it for your friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got to feel something. <laughs> but, uh, I need the validation, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, Heather, you were, uh, you were a game developer. You worked on um, Overland, I think, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I run the quality assurance department, but we're all kind of like a big team. So like titles don't really matter. It's just like kind of what oh, you can cool. do. Yeah. 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 So working on Overland was a huge privilege. Obviously working for the Saltzman, Adam and stuff was is like a huge, huge privilege. I learned so much every day. Um, it's like the first time I could say I really love my job. It's weird. <laughs> it's awesome. it's, it's a really super great. cool game. I actually remember applying to work on the soundtrack like years ago. Yeah, actually, yeah. It was super cool. Um, yeah, that's that's the example I always give like game developers because you know it's like the one thing everybody's like, I haven't launched my game, and I'm just like, it took ten years for Overland to be developed. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I was still active on Tumblr when that was happening. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. I got to name one of the dogs in the stream when. Oh. Y'all were doing the Finji Overland stream, and everybody oh, in the awesome. chat got to name dogs. That's <laughs> you name it Frank or awesome. Z. It does. It does <laughs> rule, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm so that's glad. awesome. I love. Yeah, I love that game. It has an all dogs mode now. You know, uh, so Roverland. You could, good. Yeah, Roverland. It's it's oh, it's, yes. it's so good. God, it's like so I, I test. I had to have like a moment like after development. Well, I mean, I still do some testing here and there on it, but like. I had to have a moment after development where I really just like didn't have to play it, like didn't want to play it for a bit. <laughs> but I picked it back up again when we started doing more of like the Finji show stuff. And that game is still really good. Like if you got the strats, it's pretty fun. So, oh, that's, that's great. When yeah. I ship a game, I never play that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I games, never. 
<laughs> Nina, you're a game developer and streamer as well, but uh, didn't mm -hmm. you, you did level design for Tacoma. Is that true? Yeah, I was one of the level what? designers. Mm -hmm. I didn't That's know cool. that. It's incredible. But you also yep. like... You also like independently make a lot of like just really nice like small but intimate like almost autobiographical games. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, uh... I. Oh, go on. No, I was saying I played Cybell or is it C Cybell? Sybil. It's I Sybil, but Sybil. everyone oh, pronounces okay. it differently. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played Sybil like all the way through like last week, and I thought it was just beautiful. It was really. Oh, nice. thank you. I, I love that. Sybil. I love Sybil. I gotta. I Heather gotta actually that. tested on it. I did. Yeah. I found a hmm. huge memory leak crash. It was great. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Our final <laughs> horrible bug before we released it. Um, yeah, I worked. I did Sybil and like, how do you do it? We met in May. Was the last thing that I released. Um, and it's always me and just fr various friends working on games. I do almost like a band format where like with every game I work with a different team. Um, and then I worked at Fulbright for a while and now I'm working on my own shit again. So yeah, Hell that's yeah. me. That rules. That's awesome. <laughs> She's mad fucking amazing and super renowned in the our indie, Aww. our indie scene. Yeah. Like no you. No, seriously, like people <laughs> people love you in your games. I'm I if you guys haven't played We Met in May yet, you really should. It's so it's fun. It's on my list. Yeah, oh, thanks. Adding to my list now. Yeah, it's super fun. It's uh, not to get all cheesy, but like I, her and her uh, life partner, I adore them. Like they're like one of my best friends in the entire world. So like I, I had, I got the privilege to watch them like fall in love and like get married oh. and like do the whole thing right. And then they made a game about it, and it's no. just like no. it's like amazing, you know. It's like, and you really get it. You really get the emotions and the feelings across like with their relationship like down to like their really silliness and like you know nina's love for wine and cheese like cheese <laughs> my and stuff. love for wine and cheese my <laughs> defining yeah. characteristics Your defining characteristics like that's on that's on nina's wikipedia if you didn't know um just like, Thanks, just like, like what i mean is just like the little like the little little things that are just like all in the, it's really good i love it i love your games oh so. thank you that's I'm a fan yeah, everyone, everyone should go check them out well definitely have links to that stuff in the doodly do whatever you call yeah, yeah. it <laughs> show description but speaking of romance mm. we're in the middle of a bad one right now yeah yeah we're gonna <laughs> foil that actually this whoa, would be a good whoa, time whoa. too like whoa, 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 so what whoa, whoa. uh we usually ask everybody what's your history with final fantasy like how many you know which ones do you play which ones do you like or not like like does it mean anything you know that kind of stuff it was me what, it, what does it mean what's <sighs> the meaning of final fantasy can you tell me which i one think the we final both have fantasies? a lot we both have a lot like we're very I, I know for I'm gonna speak for me, but like I know for me, like I grew up kind of in a tumultuous uh, home and mm. like there was a lot of like chaos and things like that as a kid. So like Final Fantasy was like my escape. It was like the thing that was positive. It's the thing where like I learned about relationships and I know it's like I'm getting pretty deep on it. But no, that's, like, that's what we do. yeah, like my first Final Fantasy was eight. Um, nice, perfect. The best I, one. Yeah, it's the best one. I love it. It was my first one too. That's awesome. Yeah, it was my first one. Um, I played it with my, well, I saw one of my cousins uh, at my abuelita's, my grandma's house. We used to always just play there. And yeah, I just like fell in love with it. I wound up like taking his Final Fantasy IX and just like took it home. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to fucking play this game. This now. is mine now. <laughs> this is mine now. Um, so like, you know, I just like really fell in love with it. And after I beat nine, I was like, okay, I want to go back, you know? So I started playing like four and six and, you know, stuff like that. And then finally 10 came out and 10 2. Um, yeah, so I have a pretty, a pretty deep history with it. I, I love Final Fantasy. Like the characters are my friends. Oh, as yeah, a lonely, exactly. a lonely, a lonely baby nerdy child. You <laughs> yes, <know>? so relatable. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have a pretty similar background with it, except I didn't start, I didn't discover them until Final Fantasy X. Um, and I think I must have been like 12 or something. I don't know. I was really young when I played it. I rented it from like the video store because I thought the cover looked cool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and um yeah i remember being blown away by it and it was like oh my god when i was a kid i just played it all by myself and thought it was the most magical thing i had never seen 
anything like it before. The only other games I had played were like N64 games like Mario 64 and stuff. So it was just like, wow, a game with characters I can relate to that has like romance and magic and all this stuff that I was like, I liked in stories. Um, And then I ended up getting really into Final Fantasy XI, the online game. And we mentioned Sybil before. So Sybil is actually based on my experience playing Final Fantasy XI. So, yeah, I have my like my history with XI is a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It turns out. That's awesome. Um, So, yeah, it had it had a big thing in my life. Big part of my life. (laughs) I noticed the 10-2 commentary in Sybil. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I when that came out, oh my god, I was so excited. I think I was like 14 when that came out. And we even went to the mall a day early by mistake. We were so excited uh, to pick it up and they felt bad for us, so they gave us free posters. Oh, <laughs> that's wow. Awesome. You're like awesome. come back tomorrow. You're actually early for the release. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so cute. <laughs> they should have just broke street date and gave it to you. I know. <laughs> yeah. They would have if they could have, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Legend, legends. All right. Oh, we last we left off, we uh, just ran away from Seymour and just turned around and ran back to Seymour. Yeah. So, c- all, all signs of a bad relationship. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, Fuck Seymour. Fuck Seymour, Guado. In in the most non-sexual way, Kimari just penetrated Seymour. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> a good scene. <laughs> Kimari has a lot of good shit going on in this part of the game, I gotta he say. Do- yeah, and yeah, he do- yeah, I feel like he doesn't before this either. So like he like finally is like he's like coming in, you know, taking over. I think I think Kamari's like Kamari has come in a lot in in cues in which that are psychological in communication that we can't exactly see. Like it's very subtle because I feel yeah. like yeah. He, he does. Mm-hmm. He he's like a very big like ba- he's like grandpa. He's like the. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed in you. Like yeah. sort of shit. That is you know Kimari's what I mean? Energy. You know what I mean? Like it's it's definitely like that kind of stuff that really leads up, I think, to this victorious moment. Victorious yeah, yeah. moments. My grandpa also knows the ways of the fiends. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. My grandpa also broke his horn <laughs> in a bar fight in 1962. <laughs> So we uh, we talked last time about Awaka's here, right? We discussed him already. Yeah, he's just yeah, yeah. he's always there when we need him. I always, guess. yeah, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, he's mark. always there when he needs us. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like the uh, the line that he says, which seems like an uncharacteristic uh, m- moment for him that seems sincere and not just like a sales pitch, where he's like, hey, I know you guys are traitors, but like Lady Yuna's always been a friend of mine. So even though you're traitors, oh, yeah, right. I'm still going to help you out yeah. <laughs> yeah. by that's selling fair. you shit that's overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's a loyalty program. Listen, yeah. I'm going to help you out, traitor, <laughs> by yeah, uh, yeah, right. selling you this potion at three times the regular price. <laughs> right. <traitor. laughs> <laughs> it's that trickle down. That's that yeah. <laughs> so we're allowed to now run back to where Seymour was, like where Seymour and Kamari are right now. It's still locked in Mortal Kombat. And like on the way, it's just like a long bridge, right? Like this is the long. Uh, it's so long, there's a safe sphere at both ends. There is. Mm-hmm. There is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, guest of the show Corey called it Bavel's proboscis, and I can't stop thinking about that. It's, it's like, oh, that is what it is. It's incredible. Uh, the safe spheres thing reminded me of like there was a place in my hometown where two of the same like like fast food convenience store places were <laughs> within view of each other. If you just stood like in the middle of one of the streets, you like look down one way and you're like, okay, there's that Wawa, and then I look down this way and I see the other Wawa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's the Wawa at the entrance. To Bavel and the entrance to Macalania. The Final Fantasy Wawa is yeah. unforgettable <laughs> as a phrase. You know, Rin's Wawa? It's delicious. <laughs> but, um. A Wawa the third. <laughs> but, like, now when we're walking back up to where Kamari and Seymour are, we can get into random battles here, right? And, like, one thing I noticed about these battles is they are just full of experience. Like, you could yes. grind here if you wanted. I got mm-hmm. Haystega here. Haystega? Haystaga? 
has an oh, E nice. in this one. Yeah, anyway. But um, yeah, for for this, I was just a couple of sphere levels away from getting all of like the third level magics for uh, Lulu. So I was just like, yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna level grind here a little bit. It didn't even take that long, and I, I'm very glad that I did it. <laughs> yeah, if you get, if you're like grinded up enough that you can have Lulu's third tier magic, like this upcoming boss should not be a problem. Like you are yeah. you are leveled up enough at that point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the enemies are like they're like the um, are they Machina? Are they just robot enemies that we saw on the top of the temple? And they all act, they act pretty much the same, right? You leave the guys who are kicking to the le the end, and they'll eject you from the battle with that mean kick. Um, <laughs> I hate those guys. <laughs> yeah, the, the worst. <laughs> and uh, there's the one with like the dual cannons or whatever. Those guys are there. Um, yeah. So you know. We, we've already experienced these guys, so we're and pretty the much flamethrower guys. The flamethrower mm -hmm. guys, yeah. With that long animation, they all have those like <laughs> perfectly manicured beards. Just, mm, you just get <laughs> lost in there. Build a tiny little house and live in that forest. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of good uh, opportunities to grind uh, characters if you haven't. Like, uh, for me, I was just like, I need to get Yuna's stats up because she's been for most of this game missing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. In various states, <laughs> gone for the past like ten hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they really need that grindy section there too, because narratively you can't justify letting the player leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if they don't give you an option, we always try to do too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they don't give you an option, it feels broken. So right. it, it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. As a pacing sort of area. No going back to the desert and fighting those worms. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seymour, hold on. BRB. <laughs> you just stay right there. Bye. <laughs> hold tight, Kamara. Yeah. You remember Makalania Lake where Carl tried to leave when uh, the owl bed were, like, going to kidnap you? And, uh, and, like, class was like, hey, I don't want to tell you what to do or anything, but, like, maybe you should go down there. <laughs> it's good shit. Um, but anyway, when we get to the end of the bridge, I think we just get into the fight, right? Like, there's no, like, mm -hmm. cutscene or anything. There's, there's a bit of a cutscene at, at first there? where it shows Kimari um, just still standing there with his halberd up. And uh, then, like, the rest of the party kind of runs in and, like, squares up with Seymour. And then we're immediately thrown into the okay. battle with uh, with Yuna, Kimari, and Titus, which doesn't matter what um, formation you had leading up to this. That's going to be your formation to start this fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, so this boss is called Seymour Natus. Is that how I would say that? Natus, Natus. Seymour Nathan for you. <laughs> that's, that's what we call it in the South, buddy. Seymour's nuts. <laughs> CD's nuts. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he has a big tick on him now, which came from somewhere. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, for some reason. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he does. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like, it almost kind of looks like a scorpion or something. And it's like tail is hooked into his back, right? Mm-hmm. And like a, it's kind of perched on his right shoulder, but it's large enough that like it comes down. It almost looks like a shield or something, like the way it's. Uh, looks almost like a pauldron him. the way he's wearing it. Ooh, the the old pauldron. <laughs> <laughs> we, have we had a good pauldron this season? Uh, I guess I think Titus has. Been. Like Waka is the only one. Yeah, Waka's got a good pauldron. That's right. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like a face hugger, but it's like. Oh, it kind of. So you're like, what? Thing. What is a pauldron? Can you get someone explain it's, um, to me? It's the thing that it's Cloud like, has on his arm for it's uh, like the yeah. shoulder pad, the shoulder arm oh. thing or whatever. We like made a big yeah. deal about it one season, and like <laughs> we were like pauldrons, and like it I was, was like I had no gag. idea that's what it's called. I, I think it's like around the when we fought ultimate weapon or whatever, because there's lots of pauldrons on those weapons. <laughs> yeah, oh right. yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we, we learn a lot of things. We still use the word atrium, not really knowing what it means. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Any small, any small area ish area that is like the entrance to another area. Yeah, like, yeah you know, we're just always like that checks atrium. out for me. I like that. I'm okay with this. But anyway, so what's the the thing on Seymour is called the Morta body, which is like I think it's pretty dope. I like Ooh. that. But like, so the way it works, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, is, you have to like for COVID, you get a Morta body test to make sure you're like immune. <laughs> to the right, uh, <laughs> strain, Rick right? and Morta body. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so it has like a, a so so the HPs on these enemies, right? Um, Seymour has thirty six thousand, and the Morta body only has four thousand. And the thing right. is that like that don't mean shit. It kind of it kind of do in some ways. I guess it will, when we get to the strategy of how we did okay. these fights, right? Um, Seymour can heal himself uh, 
relatively regularly, and uh, he can put up defenses, making it difficult to do damage to him. Stupid but, bitch. Stupid fucking <laughs> bitch ass motherfucker. Mother but when we do damage to the mortar body, if we reduce its HP all the way down, it will drain an additional amount to revive itself from Seymour. So we can do a lot of damage very quickly by instead of attacking Seymour, attacking the Morta body and having it do all that damage and transfer it to Seymour. So like, yeah, that so makes it can do sense. like four thousand damage to like fully restore its health. Um, I only did that once because I was like, oh, that doesn't seem as fun as just like wailing on Seymour oh, yeah. as much as I can. Even if I'm not doing a lot of damage, I want to hit him as much as possible. <laughs> So part of that, though, is um, when you do the damage to the mortar body, every time it uh, revives itself, it comes back with less HP. Um, so what you can end up doing is doing, because you can do so much more damage to the mortar body, because uh, it lacks a lot of the defenses that Seymour has. When you get it down to like 1,000 HP, you can one-hit KO it and guarantee 1,000 at least to Seymour. Um, and toward the end of the fight, he is constantly healing himself when you attack him. But he won't heal himself if the damage is done from the mortar body. So and it really depends on how much damage you can put out personally when you're fighting him. Like if you can just put out a thousand damage on Seymour consistently, then you may not need to do that strat. But for me, it was a lot faster to just attack the mortar body. Nina, you were getting so tilted anytime Seymour like healed himself on our stream. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you just like cuss him oh, out, I remember. If, if you want to hear anything about our last experience fighting him. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> that would be so good. <laughs> I actually can't remember the exact strategy we were employing, but it was something to do with reflect. And oh, oh, that's a good one. And the bio? Yeah, it might have been that. Basically, like, I didn't, I've played this game a zillion times, but I can't usually remember the specific strategy. So Heather would, like, kind of give me hints if I was getting a little stuck. And I think she said something about, yeah, like, reflect and bio. And mm -hmm. so I was doing that, but I was also getting owned. So I was like, I feel like <laughs> something's not working. And then we were so close to beating it. I like used all my Aeons and shit, but I was like, we're so fucked anyway. Like I'm about to get team wiped. And then suddenly Seymour casts Flare on Yuna, who has Reflect on her and kills himself. Uh, <laughs> yes. The ultimate wow. self <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. I just, yeah. I just remember like ten minutes before that, like Nina just being like, ah, it! and I'm just like, no, it's all right. <laughs> like we'll just, you know, if, if we have to, we'll grind again. It's, it's like it's all right. <laughs> and then like that happened, we were just like, what? God is yeah. real. <laughs> the, be the better angels, like yeah. Yeah. Yevon is real. <laughs> Yevon it is real. <laughs> it's just that meme where it's like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they had us in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, -huh. uh, -huh. uh -huh. This is another one of those fights, though, where we can uh, we have the trigger commands and we can actually talk to Seymour. It's like we did the first yeah. time when we fought mm -hmm. in Makalania Temple, um, and we do get some good text out of these. I feel like. Um, yeah, I liked that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you use the trigger command for Yuna, uh, Seymour starts talking first, and he says, It is good to see you again, Lady Yuna, but you don't seem pleased. I'll only be pleased when you're gone to the far plane. And then she gets a magic defense boost. And I love that. I think that's pretty badass. That's such a cool line, too. Yeah, it's very action yeah. hero over. How to please ladies. Send yourself to the far plane. Yeah, <laughs> just fuck off. Just I fuck mean, y'all probably buddy. talked about it in the last episode, but he, like, sexually assaulted her. So yeah. it's a really nice, like, moment of power to show, like, the victim actually getting to stand up to him and, yeah. like, fuck him up <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. it's like something that survivors don't get to see very often so mm -hmm, that scene meant mm -hmm. a lot to me yeah, um, yeah. i know heather and i both related over that when we saw this for sure absolutely oh yeah that was good who shit. wouldn't love to kill a guy twice yeah, <laughs> I'm in. yeah, yeah he's like, like actually an twice. abuser like sexual assaulter guy like he yeah. can get fucked forever mm -hmm. by eunice Hour. Yeah, from the very first episode that Seymour came in, we were just like, oh, this fucking, this fucking dude. Like, immediately, we're just like, oh, I was like, he's got real nice guy energy. You can just feel like, it on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just like, he immediately is just like, oh, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, and like, Ugh. fucking, like, just being a fucking creep. <laughs> Big like, milady energy. Yeah, Big milady worse. energy. Maybe mm -hmm. the word, like, the, the video game character I hate the most. Maybe mm -hmm. of all. Mm hmm. <laughs> I can see that. 
He does suck a big nut. Mm -hmm. um, Stupid haircut. So if uh, if you talk to him with Titus, Titus doesn't even say anything to him, but he just, like, Seymour says to Titus, So, you two seek freedom from this painful life? You talk too much, Seymour. And then Titus gets a strength increase. Um, I, I also noticed there's, like, a little bit of a delay when you hit the talk command. So I was, like, hitting A. I was like, oh, I didn't hit A. And Seymour immediately started talking, and I hit A and skipped. And I was like, well, I missed what he said. And then Titus is like, you talk too much, Seymour. I'm like, oh, that kind of works, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. good. Yeah. Good shit. Um, and the other one you can do is Oren. And Oren says, although he was not the man I once knew, Keenock was still my friend, Seymour. You will pay for his death. And then he gets a strength increase as well. Yeah. Ooh, love it. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Snaps in Z formation. <laughs> I did, ooh. Which does critical damage. Yes, I which finally... does critical damage, <laughs> killing everyone, including the team. I've been like trying to, like I always, I tell Alex and Carl all the time where I'm like, it's very important to me when this first happens in any Final Fantasy game. But I did... Nine 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 <gasps> nine nine nine. nine, nine. Yes. Finally, nice. was a banishing blade with Orin got me the quad nines. Yeah. So it's always. I think that's always how I important. finished Seymour here. Really? I, I can't remember how much damage I did to him, but um, he was he was pretty low on HP, and I like I actually waited because Orin had a uh, a, uh like a, an overdrive. I was like, I'm gonna finish him with Orin, and it's gonna be kick ass. Yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of like techniques or also like quirks in this battle, um, a thing. Like I found out immediately because I came in with a um, a Bahamut with his overdrive, completely stacked up. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Um, th if you have um, a summon in the battle and Seymour has a turn, he will immediately banish your your summon. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's done. You're done. You're done using it. It's mm -hmm. it's such a cheap move. You get one. Yep. You get one shot with each of their your yep. Aeons. So oh, yep. that sucks. <laughs> it's it's so frustrating. So I was like out of Aeons, and I was like, I think I was just through sheer force. I kept just cheering and uh, <laughs> deal that damage faster than he can heal himself. Yeah. And eventually, it kind of worked. I think the uh, the canonical strat that you should do is get him down to low enough HP that you can take him down with Yuna just hitting him with her staff. Like, not even using magic <laughs> or anything, but just like, like, just taking him down. It's like Aerith with the chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here comes Yuna um, with the staff. <laughs> I have seen also a good technique is using Reflect um, both on yourself and Seymour, so his Cura um, will actually, like, Cure oh, the party instead, that's cool. and oh, stuff nice. like that. So you can deal damage on him without him basically being able to heal himself. Big boy um, strats. I yeah, I, I think that's what Heather was trying to hint to me, and <laughs> I didn't fully figure it out, but it worked because he flared himself. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, also something that can happen. I never knew that. <laughs> Listen, Nina, you acted like I knew a lot during that playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> you knew more than me. Yeah, but like I really wasn't. Like there are some times you're just like, you can give me a hint if you want. Wait, don't give me a hint. And I'm like, that's good because I have no idea what the fuck to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like my hint is believe in yourself. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> Typically works. <laughs> I can't wrap my head around um, reflect strats because it's like it's like playing a game of chess. Like I have to think about what my enemy is gonna do that I'm gonna do, but it's gonna happen to me. Yeah. And I'm just like that's that's too many. I'm like one move ahead. That's as far as I can think. <laughs> yeah. I feel that's like fair. also Talk to the hand. The, yeah. the double reflect strat seems kind of like in an earlier Final Fantasy game that would just cause like a soft lock in your game. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're both right. reflected, and now it's just like flare going back Reflect and forth war. forever. Yeah. In one, yeah. that can happen, right? Like in the first one? I think so. I yeah. think we talked about something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a fucking infinite loop. Uh, the other strat that I think we mentioned um, is bio. has He's not immune to bio, so or that's... You can poison him, yeah. Yeah, mm. free damage there. So I think there's Lulu a... MVP a again. I think there's a clip on Nina's channel while we were in that battle where I was literally screaming at the top of my lungs about coming back with a bio and kicking Seymour's yeah. ass and just like, I was just like mad. I was done. I was like, I'm about to fuck you up with this bio. <laughs> we did so many bio strats. That was like the first thing I would try a lot of the time. I was just like, is this another bio bitch? Like, we gotta go. <laughs> bio bitch. I feel like from this fight, 
to the end of the game, they're such like motherfuckers that like Bio just becomes like a de- like a de facto like mm-hmm. oh another uh-huh. fucking boss time to whip out Bio again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just essential. It's not like a, a like a, a pro strat or anything. It's just like yeah. oh no, this like I need to do this or I won't win. Now I'm gonna <laughs> it say helps a lot. It does we'll, help a lot. Yeah, we'll see if I eat these words or not in the future. But I am gonna say live on podcast. I'm not going to use bio for any of the bosses on Mount Gagazet. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm not going to stretch it. On the podcast right now, I'm using it on all of them. <laughs> I'm with I'm with Carl's team. <laughs> Compare notes later. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not trying to be proud here. There ain't no shame and no walkthrough game or anything like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. The only Final Fantasy speedrunner here is like, I'm going to do the thing that like doesn't give me free damage each turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't spent run 10. That game's that game's too True. long. <laughs> yeah. Although I think it's shorter than the Wild Arms 3 speedrun, so I don't know why I'm what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> wild arms. Wow, look um, at these wild arms. Oh, that's like, um. all right, Curtis, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys, settle down. <laughs> Muscle boys. Yeah, yeah, me out of all of us. <laughs> I like barely get out of bed. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> all right, sorry, Alex. Continue your podcast. This this is Curtis's idea. Oh. Yeah, but you do all the work. <laughs> it's all of your guys' podcasts. Aww. This is Yevon's podcast. This is yeah, Yevon's exactly. podcast, actually. <laughs> This is the only <laughs> podcast in existence that is like certified and approved by Yevon. So we got that going for us. That's wow, look at the time. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was a Yevon podcast. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, yeah. Everyone knows the prayer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's really all the the real big things that Seymour can throw at us. He's a, he's got a lot of magic power. Uh, like you were saying, he can cast flare. Um so you gotta watch out for that. Mortabody body can also. Oh, so oh, one of the yeah, things that yeah. happened for me was that uh, I think you can petrify. Uh, Seymour can petrify. Yeah. One of your guys, and then the mortar body will do a shattering break, which is how I lost Orin halfway through. This uh. I somehow I somehow made it through, but it just I only had Lulu and Titus were just like Titus kept getting KO'd, and I had Lulu kept bringing him back, and then just. Orin got broke. I miss him every day. Yeah. Yeah, I got petrified a bunch, but I also had like 99 softs because I was like, okay, petrify is like the real deal in this game. I'm just stocking up. Yeah. Well, I remember being really annoyed by that petrify. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, can you not? Oh, there's so many boss fights with it where it's like a big issue. So I think yeah. we also had 99 softs like at all times. <laughs> yeah. oh, we also we also uh, equip some armor that was oh, yeah. uh, stoneproof armor. Stoneproof mm-hmm. armor. That's a that- really good idea. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that was later, but yes. Well, yeah, because we I was that. I was like so sick of all the petrifies. I was like, how do mm-hmm. we stop this? Yeah. <laughs> there are so ways. I think stop. Another <laughs> another strategy which like I started doing was like what I always do, just haste. And like while Titus had a lot of different moves, I just used cheer so that he was like maxed up, including the the strength buff that he got from talking to Seymour. And then like Seymour just ca- uh, uh, cast a like break on him I think which like not only petrifies you but removes all of your buffs when it when you get like freed from it so I was just like cool like now Titus is just back at base stats (laughs) that was my biggest beef of just constantly getting knocked out because I think when you KO a character they lose their buffs too right yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because I had tons of just like cheer I had like magic or had focus and stuff just to kind of make sure Titus landed as much damage and receive as little damage but he kept getting knocked out (laughs) so just kept going back down to like I know 1,000 damage instead of 4,000 yeah Love very frustrating. Love but. to see Titus get knocked out, but not in battle, <laughs> and not by Seymour. <laughs> yeah, not by Seymour. Yeah, <laughs> we get knocked down, we get up again. Ain't never gonna get, get us down. down or keep us down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was in '90s. That was too long ago. Take a potion drink, <laughs> right? Take an ether drink. Did that come out in the '90s? That song? <laughs> Soft drink. I was yeah, just gonna say that, drink. Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's really all the the tricks he's really got uh i wouldn't say he's too bad i guess he's like a, a decent challenge for this area um yeah i found him easier than the first every i'm sorry there did you, you call seymour yeah. a trick ass bitch i think you just called seymour <laughs> a trick ass bitch i heard that <laughs> we didn't have to <laughs> you did that for me i know thank he's, you he's proved yeah. it. <laughs> um but i got a two level two key spheres for winning and a shell targe which is like a armor for a riku I don't know what a targe is. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm not Where's sure. Where's Google? 
<laughs> Here, we Here we go. go yeah, I got the same thing. I got four level two key spheres, which is awesome, and a shell bracer. So again, just more of the like kind of random uh, drops that you can get from boss battles. So Google says the nearest target is. <laughs> 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 That's good. There are Crusader monks stuff. outside of it trying to defend it for some reason, uh, but you can just, uh, you know, ignore that. You could just cast bio. It's all right. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> According to the little known website, uh, Wikipedia, a targe <laughs> <laughs> is a general word for a shield in late old oh. English. It's okay. Oh, okay. diminutive. It's also a derogatory Scottish term for a formidably aggressive older woman. I'm pretty sure that's what Riku's equipping. We apologize yes. to our so Scottish me. listeners. Future me. <laughs> Just call me Heather Targe McSassblast. <laughs> that's my future. That's, that sounds Scottish. Yeah, 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 right? I do really like this picture, though, of this guy with a Targe from Wikipedia. Like, really. Oh, that's wow. a good look. Oh, so it is a target. Yeah, it actually it says it comes from the word target, actually. Yeah, that is like the medieval target brand logo. You know, like when Target was back in the 1800s. Yeah. Gregorian Target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they rebranded when the calendar became <laughs> Gregorian. <laughs> and then they got the dog and it was, you know, it was <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, I forgot about the Target dog. Before that, it was a dire wolf, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any cats in Final Fantasy X? Kimari. No, 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 no. Uh, I feel like, I feel like... There's those like bobcats we saw in um around uh, Luca and Bavel, uh, not Bavel, um in Besaid. Besaid, yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's what right. I was gonna say. I was like, no, in like... the end, there, but there's also a few in uh, at Luca as well around the square. We sometimes see them. Sorry, right. I'm a cat nerd, so I'll just be like, yeah, is there any cats in Final <laughs> Fantasy X? Let's talk about that. It's good podcast content, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did have like a whole segment on an episode about how many cats were in Final Fantasy VII. So yeah, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't keeping track of this game guys it's a yeah i'll pretty good this <laughs> one well uh let's see all right whatever that okay what was happening in the game again i'm sorry <laughs> right where are we we just killed seymour a second time like riku Six. said before what the hell is seymour doing alive we made uh short work of him <laughs> again and took him down yeah <laughs> did she really say that <laughs> she did yeah like when we saw him last episode i think she's just like what's seymour doing alive and it's like yeah. that's a very good question i was like that is the biggest of mood through the entire final <laughs> fantasy <laughs> game. i think that was on the fair Fahrenheit when we if it was like an optional cutscene yeah. between yeah. her and Orin like Seymour what's he doing alive like, yeah. thought we killed that that son of a bitch also like I, I hate oh, as we always called him that Bobby Hill motherfucker Keenock's dead now but I am sad that we'll <laughs> never get Hill any more Keenock with a gun because like that has been keeping me going like I'm just like <laughs> I'll be at work and think about Keenock with a gun and be like <laughs> life's worth living <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I had this Glock motherfucker did you <laughs> It's so good. Why does he Shit. have that? It's fantastic. <laughs> He's always keeping that MF thang on him. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but as, as soon as this battle is over, uh, the screen is just black, right? Like there's no um, follow up to that scene immediately. We're just it just narratively moves on. Right. So yeah. Seymour spazzes out. Yeah. Yeah. During then, his death animation. And the fade to yeah. black. Um, and we have some Titus narration here. Right. And Titus says, we escaped with our skins intact, but Yuna lost something. I could already tell her faith was shaken. Yevon had betrayed her. I felt like I should do or say something, anything, but nothing came. I was just as lost as she was. And then, and then the scene comes back up and we're in uh, Makalania. The, the forest. The Macarena forest. The Ma Macarena <laughs> forest. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like I like that dialogue though because I appreciate that Titus is a guy who knows when to shut the fuck up and like not weigh in well, on well, now someone's trauma. <laughs> Shit, dudes need to learn a little more. <laughs> <laughs> He's not always good about it, but he gets better over the course of the yeah. game, and that's like a really good example of him being like, okay, let me think about someone other than myself, yeah. and it's like really good to see. It's yeah, something that yeah. I really love about Titus's uh, character development, like over the game. Something that me and Nina like talked a lot about is the fact that like he's a 16 year old boy, right? 16, 17, 16, yeah, yeah going like through, right, going yeah. through like a ton of trauma, like being like dropped on like this total place. He has no idea where he is. And like, he's having to learn how to not be like a traumatized screw up and like, 
how to interact with people like through life. And it's like throw through the game, like even down to where you get now, it's like Nina says, like he's starting to learn his cues more. He's starting to understand, uh, social things and everything else. I don't know. I liked it. It's good shit. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's 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 a very good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just like kind of recap, like the beginning of the game, he's kind of center of attention. Everyone knows his name. He's kind of used to being like in center of attention. And he's a celebrity. Trying to prove shit to his dad, basically. Trying mm-hmm. to... Living on his yeah. yacht boat. Mm-hmm. He's very like, like that kind of like uber, like fucking rich kid privilege at the beginning of the game where like everything revolves around him. Yeah, but the one thing you have to realize as well is even though he was a rich kid, he did lose his mother and his dad. And he That's had true. to, you know, he mm-hmm. had to live alone based on this glory that people thought of his own father, not even of who mm-hmm. he was as a person, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, uh, much like it's, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like <laughs> just like Batman and everything. They all need to go to therapy. That's what, yeah. that's what Orin is, is just, you know, the butler, you know, <laughs> Orin, Orin is, is the elf. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so in the movie, uh, Oren would be played by Sir Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to bury another jet. <laughs> not another baseball player. <laughs> Sorry. So the scene comes up. We're in Makalani uh, Forest, and everybody, with the exception of Yuna and Kimari, are there, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, Yeah, like Oren walks in, and then like a conversation starts. Well, we're all clear. We will have to avoid Bevel in the future. Yuna. And Riku goes on and says, said she wanted to be alone. And Oren's like, of course. Um, and then I think we uh, get control of Titus. And there's a save sphere here that is directly next to Oren and directly it's next really to Waka. It's really frustrating to get to. And the hitbox to get it. Because I, I was I like, okay, I definitely don't want to talk to like Waka first. I, like, I'm going to talk to Riku or <laughs> Nobody <Luna> does. <laughs> yeah. I was like, but I want to save just in case. And then like I went to the save sphere and I was trying to get it. And I like took my time with it and angled myself. And then I was just like, oh, no, I'm talking to Waka. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's so hard to get to that save sphere right here. Like I had to like mm-hmm. be running, you know, and I'm gonna like shift the direction that I was moving and like constantly hit the A button to like cycle through dialogue and finally get it. And I was just like, this is dumb. It's, it's like the save sphere gives off a little heat and everyone's kind of huddling around. <laughs> I just want to be close to the blitz. That's what they're doing in there. It's not a true RPG game if you don't like struggle to do a basic feature. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least once. Right, right. <laughs> no more off. True. No. More <laughs> um, but yeah, if you do talk to Walker, though, uh, he says, must be tough for Yuna. We leave at daybreak. If Yuna figures out where we're going, that is. And then I was trying to save, and I, he keeps saying over and over again. Waka, shut the fuck up! I'm just trying to save! God! Dude, get out of the way! Get Stop out of the way! I get it! You have he's, feelings! Yeah, Jesus. he's trying to, like, open up, and we're just like, shut up! Yeah, he's like, he's like, sooner or later, I'm going to be able to blitz through here again, and uh, I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> See my blitz fix. Mm-hmm. I know I quit and everything, but I just missed the good I, yeah. old days. <laughs> um, if you talk to Oren, who's also standing there, he says... Uh, maybe you should talk to her, like her being Yuna. Maybe talk to him again. He just says, I am tired. <laughs> like, mood. <laughs> mood. <laughs> so <laughs> relevant. Yeah, he is a very 2021 kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah feel it's like. been a while since we went to a actual like agency to like sleep yeah, or anything. Yeah, that's right? true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Haven't heard Titus snoring in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rika says, wonder what Yuni will do, huh? You think she'll quit her pilgrimage? And Titus says, well, that's what you want, right? And she goes, well... If Uni really wants to keep going, then I guess I shouldn't stop her. You know? That's what I think anyway. I was like, ooh, interesting, interesting. I like that about Riku. I love the the Riku Yuna dynamics so much. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. especially because they've grown up in like two well, they're they're cousins, right? But they've yeah. like grown up in two vastly different like social structures and cultures that are like literally opposite of each other, literally like hate one another. Right. And like everything that Riku has been raised to believe in, um, she's throwing aside for her cousin, for her friend, Mm -hmm. you know, like she's saying like, I literally don't believe in this, but like, if you, if you feel like you got to do it, like I'm going to support you. And Mm -hmm. I really respect that. You know, that's good. Love. I, I like to see it. Yeah, it's like Yuna's from Naboo. 
And Riku's a Gungan. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of true. They though, must come together. I, I, I also like uh, what you were just saying, like... Um, even just the extreme ends of it where it's like, you know, like w- what we know about Yevon now and everything that Yuna was brought, like that's the extreme in one direction. And right. then the other is like being the the daughter of Sid, which takes it so far in the opposite direction. Yeah. So Absolutely. It's like, and I, like- I, I, I really like the scene where Riku uh, meets Yuna for the first time and is just immediately like accepted into the party. And yeah. we don't know their connection at all yet. Like we only kind of know Riku a little bit. And she just like shows up and like, uh, Yuna, Riku, and and Lulu all like walk away to have their conversation. And they're like, "Yep, she's a guardian now." And I was like, "Oh, that was quick. Like, yeah. it, it's so nice to be like, oh, hey, like, we're, uh, I yeah, girls be, be like that. I protect you. Yeah. <laughs> we just exactly, go off and, yeah. we go off and huddle in a corner, and they're like, all right, this is how it's gonna go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, I I think it also like it reminds me like the, the owl bed too. Like their like way of life is very pragmatic. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they they all kind of have like this idea of just like, well, if we should do a thing that just gets the best outcome. You know what I mean? I like, think it's a, it's a it's like a, a fantasy version of the atheism versus religion yeah like uh divide what is it not i don't want to say divide but it is but like uh the vast dichotomy. differences between the two dichotomy that's the word <laughs> the binary the binary yes the, the age-old struggle of reddit versus christian mingle.com <laughs> listen i'm not trying i'm not trying to isolate any of your christian podcasters here all right you oh, know we, like uh, we've done oh, we did that long ago <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I, uh, I really, I really appreciate like the, the structures of relationships in that way and how so many people are just kind of like overcoming like old dynamics in which they thought they were right to kind of like realize that we're all just different people with different like journeys. And the best we could do is just support each other along the way and like not judge mm-hmm. each other, you know, except for yeah. Waka, mm-hmm. right? Except for Waka. Because he's a piece of- well, we always judge uh, pieces of shit because, you know, accountability is a thing. No, but- I mean, he doesn't learn anything. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I actually yeah, yeah. feel kind of bad that uh, with this podcast, we've platformed Waka a little bit with his, his horrible, uh, <laughs> his horrible, uh, just outlooks on everything. He's P racist. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. He's super oh, yeah. racist. It's like, no, I, mm-mm. Like, I just remember every time we were just like, oh, shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. What about free speech, y'all? I like that uh, <laughs> Alex, oh, so no. I made Alex a mod of my Twitch channel. And like the first thing he did, he banned the word gamers. So you can't say gamers. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> and then he banned sandblasted grease monkeys. Because that's what I fucking Waka calls like the Albed. <laughs> we're like, we don't, we don't talk like that on, on this channel. Yeah, we don't talk like that here. This is a podcast. Positive community. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no G words. It's a gamer free zone. It's a gamer free zone. <laughs> um, the only other one there is Lulu. And if you talk to her, she says, Kamari's with her, but maybe you should go too. I think it might help if you were there. Which I, I like this here because like <sighs> Lulu has spent a good lot of time being like, yo, you need to check yourself or you need to like not grow too attached to you, know, buddy. And like, yeah, I feel like off, at this yeah. point she's like, hey, you know what? I think it might actually help if you go talk to her. Like, I think mm-hmm. that I think that Lulu, for one, com- kind of coming to terms with her relationship with Waka and mm. like mourning her previous relationship is kind that plus seeing the fact that like when two people attach, right? Like me too, I get like that. Like, for example... For example, a real life example, when Nina and her life partner got together, I was like, I don't know about this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just like, you better hold on a minute. I don't know. And then, you know, like, and then, but eventually you see how much that person makes that person happy and makes them a better person. And you're just like, mm-hmm. all right, you know what? I think they really need you. And you just accept that. And I think that that's kind of where Lulu was at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. There's one more thing that Lulu says, which she'll repeat, and she says, uh, she sighs and says, <sighs> It would be so easy to fight without thinking. Walk a straight line. So easy. Ooh. Which I think is really kind of nice poetic thing. I mean, she's in this kind of stuck between, like, like we were just saying, she's stuck in a very kind of awkward situation with everyone yeah. and how her relationships are with every person in the party and different people. Well, she's mourning, she's mourning the loss of the love of her life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. While simultaneously, obviously growing attached to his older brother, you know, like there's mm-hmm. a lot of complicated things that could 
I, I can imagine a person could feel, you mm-hmm. know. And yeah, she's mourning like other. I don't. I don't know if y'all are at this point in her story, but she's mourning more than Chapu as well, yes. which yes. plays mm-hmm. into the like her feelings about Yuna's pilgrimage itself. So Absolutely, she's yes. got a lot of her like whole story is just her processing shit. Yo, like huh? she's got a lot to Alex, go through. Cut cut what I'm getting ready to say probably but <laughs> Alex keep this in <laughs> <laughs> no just keep it I in. actually yeah, forgot about that that what you're talking about right now <laughs> this probably ties into when we went to the far plane and saw Lulu mm. talking yeah about. oh my mm-hmm. god it does I forgot yo I forgot about that <laughs> entire plot point when you were saying that I was like what else does Lulu have to oh my god that was like a whole big yeah, thing it's a big so thing. just, just uh-huh. to be spoiler free do you, you do you guys remember what that is? Do you... I, I do now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. They, I don't. They, I don't think they've played it there yet. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I we think with the context then. clues, I <laughs> yeah. might be able to kind of figure something out. But no, when you when you see that plot, that point of the plot, you're just gonna like just remember with this conversation, and it's gonna yeah. be like it's gonna be like whoa. You I know? think it'll be like, next yeah. week. Yeah, next week she's mm-hmm. going yeah. through. You're close. A, yeah, she's going through a lot of like processing from her own self worth and life and relationships and everything else. And I think that's mm-hmm. why you see her so basically like fuchi faced and cranky. You know what I mean? Like at yeah, the beginning yeah. of the game, you know. And she's, you know, like all of us, I imagine, have gone through times in our life where you know we were just not fun to be around. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. It's, so it's like to see her kind of like use these relationships to come out of her shell. It's yeah, it's a great, a great, a great thing. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think the only other thing is I, I don't think we went over uh, the last thing that Riku says. Um, if we did, we can just cut this. But she says, I wonder if there's a way to perform the final summoning and not die. Mm. That'd be great, wouldn't it? I guess someone would have thought of it in the last thousand years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like we've also had that conversation, too, at some point of just, like, trying to figure stuff out. And then it's like, well, I mean, this has been a, an ongoing cycle for, like, thousands of years. Well, you know? look, mm-hmm. the well, sandwich had to be invented at some point in human history. And there's, like, <laughs> a long amount of human history before the sandwich, the greatest type of food, was invented. So, like, <laughs> it's not just a natural thing, you know? <laughs> We're closer to the sandwich than we are to the Big Bang. (laughs) (laughs) Riku Riku saying that, too, is honestly probably the writers just, like, putting in another reminder of that being, like, the stakes. Like, they bring that issue up a lot. And it's one of those things that I think the devs just, like, want to keep bringing to the player to, like, keep it on their mind so that they feel the weight of all these this like meta narrative that's going on because right. yeah. otherwise you get swept up in the personal drama which is really good but you know they want you to keep that stuff in mind as well there's yeah. so much yeah. other character yeah. development and stuff mm-hmm. that you can miss if you focus on the drama i right. think yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. it's a lot <laughs> all better people of science so they're all gonna be like there must be a way yeah there must be a cure mm-hmm. to the final summoning well it kind of goes mm-hmm. back to how like the thing i said about like how we're you know how we're raised you know if you're raised to think very analytical you're just like how can i solve this issue mm-hmm. yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like and so she's going back to her own coping Instead of just kind of surrendering to faith and beliefs mm-hmm. like yeah that's i mean that's life tradition. right yeah. we just we, we could say we yeah. have control but we honestly do more harm to ourselves if we don't surrender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really true. Take me life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yevon, but, take yeah. the wheel. Yevon, take the wheel. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so you know what? This would probably be a good place to take our break. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's 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 talk to let's talk to Aaron and Waka a couple more times frustratingly <laughs> while we're trying to yeah, access right. the safe sphere. <laughs> and then let's finally save and take our break. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Where was we? We find yourself in the woods. <laughs> oh, yeah. Obviously. Oh, yeah. It's about to get juicy. Did I say we found yourself? I think I changed. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what you said. We still love you, though. The royal we. Yes. <laughs> the royal we, yeah. yeah. Which means you. <laughs> the uh, obvious exits are north, south, east, and west here. And if you go west... You Don't are going Carl. toward Bevel and a bunch of guards try to swarm Titus and he runs away. They take and like two it. steps forward. Like they kind of just charge a little bit and then Titus like runs away. And then you're less than 10 feet from them and they just gave up. They just give up. They're like, eh. They're just like, <laughs> eh. Those are those guys there. who just, yeah, like 
started a riot essentially but started yeah, a riot mm-hmm. re-killed the fucking <laughs> the pope or whatever. Killed the, yeah re-killed the guy they already killed more security than the capital <laughs> yeah them guado be up our butts man mm-hmm. well, i was just saying if the guado were the one storming the capital it would have just blown up the capital yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it yeah um but uh is this this is not the same place we fought Sphereomorph, is it? No, it's it not. It seems it's similar. Similar. Yeah, it seems pretty it's similar. It's right near yeah. there. No, no, it's not. I can tell you. I can tell you it's not because we're on the other end of Makalania right now. Yeah, it's a different area, um, yeah. but it's similar. It's it's very similar looking. Yeah, it's like a pond. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I was just like thinking. I was like, I don't want to make an ass of myself. I have to like really make sure that that is a different room. But I'm sure now. <laughs> it's the same level. It's the same area, so yeah, 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 Makalania. Yeah. Yeah. You're telling me there's one, only one magic tree in this whole forest. Yeah, it's the <laughs> it's the same it's the same place, just a different aisle. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, when Titus walks in, he finds Yuna there, right? And I guess Kamari by extension is also there. Um, yeah, you can talk to Kamari, and he just like nods, to, like. I think he just kind of point? points in the he direction points. of mm-hmm. Yuna. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Yuna's like standing in the water in front of this tree, right? Yeah, she uh, is. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah <laughs> <she> is. <laughs> um, and uh, it like looking very like not meditative. What's the bad version of meditative? Contemplative. <laughs> that's that's the one. I hate contemplative. The bitch just looks sad. She looks right? sad. Let's just say that. All right. Yeah, she, right. she looks sad. And I guess she realizes that Titus has walked up behind her, like without turning around, because she starts speaking to him. I always thought that this would be easier somehow. I thought that everyone would help me with all my friends together beside me. I've been trying so hard. Titus, like, starts to walk into the water as well, right? And uh, he says, maybe you're trying too hard. They told me everything. Talking about, like, the fact that he knows about the final summoning now. He knows the true meaning of the pilgrimage now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I already forgot that she doesn't know that he knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is where she learns that. Yeah, she still thinks that he doesn't know. Um, I'm also curious, like in that, in the context of knowing about the final summoning, is that just common knowledge to to uh, Spira folk, or is it only people like in the circle of Yevon and hmm. stuff? Because that's a good question. I would assume that. I mean, there's been however many high summoners who have like. Yeah, I feel like it's sin. common knowledge for sure. I feel like it's okay. got to be common yeah. knowledge. Like, Which, yeah. Okay, then that's probably like why Waka was like, we weren't hiding it from you. We just like through like exclusion, just avoided talking. I feel like it. there was just like NPC narrative that would be like the sacrifice and, you know, things like that, yeah. like of Lady Yuna as well, that kind of lean towards people knowing. But I guess it's not really kosher to just be like, yeah, I can't wait for the summoner to die. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah that's know? a very good point. I was, yeah. I was trying to think about it. I was like, well, you know, I don't know if everybody knows. But then I thought I was like, well, the other possibility is that nobody knows. And everybody's just like, man, isn't it weird how like <laughs> the high summoner just never comes home? Like, <laughs> yeah, we just said really we good... set the high summoner to a farm upstate. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, they know because otherwise all the stuff with the Albed wouldn't have happened. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. They're concern would be really confusing gotcha. if true. they That's didn't true. you know know about the final summoning <laughs> yeah no they just so it's yeah it's something that's not yeah. stated just but like the game implies it <laughs> All right. yeah. it's taboo <laughs> it's probably it's probably just bad etiquette to ask like to, m- to even mention it it's just like it's all about this Pe- keeping people in high spirits and stuff. They're mm-hmm. like, think about the calm, not about you know. Th- th- exactly. Weird. They're thinking about they're thinking about the des- the destination, not the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leave that to the summoners to think about. It's the way the system was kind of made, I think you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't want to know how the sausage is made. Mm-hmm. The the, tr- <laughs> the trickle down final summoning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it t- Titus apologizes. You know, right? He says, "I'm sorry. It's just all those things that I said." Like, let's go get sin. Or about Xanarkand. I didn't know what would happen to you, Yuna. I guess... I hope it didn't make you sad. Forgive me. I was like, uh, Titus. That's a good moment. Like we were yeah. talking about a little bit earlier. Like, I feel like Titus has come a long way. Like, maybe more Stepping than... Stepping up as a man! <coughs> yeah. <laughs> like, maybe more than most Final Fantasy characters, too. Because I feel like, you know, Final Fantasy is good about having character development... But there's been a lot of development with Titus. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's come a, yeah. far, a long way. Yeah. So. And it, it's it's a hard thing to like 
a admit when you're wrong and b kind of like realize that you've been an idiot and like come mm-hmm. to terms with that and state it where like he's been literally making an idiot of himself anytime he's talked about this for the in- entire d- duration of this journey yeah, and yeah. then he's just like yeah i just realized everything i said and i'm very sorry he could have just been like left it at that and been like okay i'm just gonna not bring it up and you know we're just gonna move on and but instead he was just like, no, I, I now see like that I could have been really hurting you with everything I said. And I'm really sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's some, it's a lesson of accountability. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. I like that he also before that brings up like maybe you're working too hard. I yeah. always thought that that was really thoughtful of him to say because she is like doing everything i mean even right before that scene everyone's like okay like you know yuna's gonna decide where we go next like let's wait for yuna yuna's doing this yuna's doing that and it's like she is carrying such a burden for everyone she is working too hard for the whole game and like no one acknowledges that very often especially not titus so to have him like suddenly acknowledge that i'm sure for her as a character would feel relieving in a way well, look, also, yeah. you, you got to realize the fact that like this is, again, like I said, the how the system was made, right, where the burden mm-hmm. entirely goes on the summoner. It's yeah. the, the the main purpose is the like the main goal is the calm. It doesn't matter like who, what happens that we get there, but that sin is defeated and like we do get there. And it's it is the responsibility of the summoner. Mm-hmm. Right. But she's like you said, she's, it's too much to hold. It's too much yeah. for any human to hold, let yeah, alone exactly. a young girl. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. As, as someone who doesn't even like to have like the decision of what I'm going to eat for dinner, like me and my <laughs> girlfriend, like I can't imagine what Yuna's going through. Where it's like, hey Yuna, where are we going next? Are you still going to do that thing where you're going to end up dead, but the world's going to be a better place, or are we just you're going to not do that selfishly? And like the entire like everyone's existence is on her shoulders and Mm -hmm. like even worse than that it's not even a thing like that it's like yeah everyone knows that that's how it is everyone knows you for that and you have to smile while doing it like just yeah yeah. everyone is wants you to be their their strength so just smile through it and pretend to be happy like it's it's too much yeah it's the story of women everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like actually such a good metaphor. And I really like like to build on that. You know, a lot of these stories, especially Final Fantasy games, often have that character where it's like, oh, this one's going to save the world. Or like, you know, that's sort of a tropey, like hero's journey type character. But in Final Fantasy X with Yuna, they show that like that's not actually the cool thing to do be or do necessarily and they you know examine it from another angle um and i think actually some of the gender stuff around that they deal with pretty well right so i like that this moment in the story is a good example of that kind of thing culminating Mm -hmm. and another thing i wanted to touch on as well is that you have to realize that titus is coming into this culture as an outside viewer right Mm -hmm. so like Mm -hmm. where everybody else would be like this is just how it always is the summoner has to deal with everything this is just her journey her burden and we just have to be there for him he's like wait hold on you shouldn't have to carry all this by yourself it's not normal (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And maybe you should try a little less because these people don't seem to understand that this shouldn't be all on you. You know? Yeah. 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 At least he didn't compare it to Blitzball again. Yeah. It's true. true. Yeah. It's like, I was just like Blitzball. You can't can't be thinking about it. It's like, I know exactly how you feel, Yuna. Yeah. 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 When I need to score a goal to help my team win the fun game. Look, when I am really focusing on making the jack shot and like. (laughs) I have a cramp in my foot. I know exactly how you feel. Like, I feel like I, I, I don't remember if we've made this joke on the podcast before, but like the, the meme of the guy, like explaining something to a woman in like a picture that you can tell she's not really interested in. And then oh, like, the, people one where put, the, like, dude, a, the people with the fucking ball game or whatever. Yeah. And he's there's, just there's like, there's one with the ball game and there's one at a party where like some guy is like yelling at into someone's. So, oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Either yeah. they just have like Titus and Yuna and just like yeah. <laughs> this is just like in Blitzball way. That's nice, yeah. Titus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're just um, gonna refocus on the fact that he developed as a character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's come That's the so important far. Thing. Yeah. yeah, he's gotten better. Um, but after, so after he says uh, that he apologizes and says, "I hope it didn't make you sad," she says, "I wasn't sad. I was happy." Yuna. Just don't do it. Yuna, just don't do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Yuna's just like the pilgrimage? 
Yeah, bro. That's right. Forget all about <laughs> sin. Just smoke a joint and worry about being a summoner and forget all that, you know, just Hakuna Matata, you know, live a normal life. Come on now. You know, what do you say? <laughs> what, what, what do you say? And she, like, she say? like laughs a little bit, doesn't she, at that? Where she's like, oh, uh-huh. maybe I will. Yeah. I think that's when she starts to be like super excited and she like yeah. starts to kind of indulge into that fantasy a little bit. You know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. She's like, maybe I will. Wouldn't everybody be surprised? And then Titus is like, yeah, except Riku, bro. She'd be like totally <laughs> with us. Lulu and Waka, you know, they're kind of like straight edge. But, you know, I think we could break them. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, like, Yuna's like, Kamari would say yes, too. I know. But Sir Oren, shh, Sir Oren, I'll make him understand, Yuna. Shh, just a couple of tokes and he'll be right into the, you know. And <laughs> it's the least I can do for you, Yuna. It's the least I can do. Yeah, Sir Orange just hasn't had the right strain. He just he's hasn't totally had the right strain yet, you know? And so Yuna's <laughs> like, no, I should tell him. You're so fucking high right now. Um, <laughs> what'll, what'll I do if I give up my pilgrimage? And he's like, hey, Xanarkin, let's go to Xanarkin. When she, when she says, uh, um, what'll I do if I give up my pilgrimage? She like leans back and just starts floating in the water. And like, there's like yeah. a really like pretty shot of like the reflection of like a crescent moon in the sky while she's saying Mm -hmm. that it's like I really love the total vibe of that whole scene too because it's kind of like you know she's going through kind of this like painful trauma release thing and then you kind she's kind of going to a little bit of that like little kind of dissociative place where she's like what if I just run away from all of my problems and you can kind of see (laughs) like the relax on her you know like as she says that she's like ah you know? There's some cinematic symmetry here, but this reminds me of that shot when uh, Titus is like on his back thinking about when Walk is trying to get him to join the team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. He's just in a kind of he's he's spacing out, but they're all just both just floating on their back like otters. They're just dreaming. Like, they're like they're kind of like <laughs> yeah. in that they're in that like fantasy of like, ugh, you know, just kind of trying to cope, I think. That's like a coping mechanism. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but for sure. Also, it's like one of the, you know, throughout the game they're in these intense, very extreme situations that like most teens aren't gonna be in, even within their world. So it's like a nice moment for them to kind of just be Children. Like normal yeah. almost yeah. like oh okay. I'm gonna like float around it's almost like something from a YA novel or something or like yeah. a, a teen mm-hmm. drama it's like one of those scenes absolutely it yeah. feels like it's drawing on that kind of imagery of what if I my life was different what if I was just normal and that's Oof. important for them let's get out of this town you and me in the yeah. open road does yeah. that kind of hit you in the heart though like the whole like i think like all of us as humans like what if i was just normal like what if we just like yeah. at some point in our life you know what i mean it kind of touches on that like little childish like yeah. thought of like what if i was so normal you know it's mm-hmm. like well no actually being normal is being a human with a lot of problems <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> well if yeah if it wasn't her it'd be someone else doing it exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 sorry though i didn't mean to uh, interrupt there Fucked up my good voice acting here. Fuck I get. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did mean okay, so Titus is all like, like hey. I'm not sure I like bro Titus, but it, no, it, no, no, it's, we're gonna go back to normal. It's, more, it's fine. It's, it's, fine. it's more, it's more tolerable. But the bit is dead. All right, we're just gonna go back to normal reading. <laughs> so, so Titus is all like, hey, Xanarkin, let's go to Xanarkin. Not the one in Spira, the one I'm from. Yeah, we can all fly there. Everyone can go. Then we'll be a big party at my place. And then Yuna's yeah, like, that. and we'll go see Blitzball. And he's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, he said that's right, but I wanted to be like, fuck yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to say. You finally get yeah. it. <laughs> You're going to come to one of my band's shows? Well, it's that same shit again. <laughs> it's like they're kind of trying to role play normal teens again. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like, I mean, the kind of giveaway is that Titus is still kind of convinced that the Xanarkin we're going to is different than his Xanarkin. Mm-hmm. Like, he's still like, no, no, no. Like, I'm not in a thousand years in the future or whatever. Yeah. That, that's something completely different. Like they're they're both in their own like they're in a lot of denial, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, of like what their real like real situation is. And I think that in a way is almost protective because like how can you begin to justify any of their situations, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a healthy way. Yeah. It, it's very cute. Yeah. But it's also like very naive. And I think that's like that's what's mm-hmm. so heartbreaking about it, right? Is because it's mm-hmm. like if if there was an option in this game where it's like, yeah, you can just go and do this now, I'd be like, okay, I'm getting the good ending. Like, we're just going yeah. and doing that now. Like, it's like right. in Skyrim, we're like, you know, I'm just 
I'm going to not be Dovahkinning anymore. I'm just going to start a house and a family. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, Get like... a dog, maybe. <laughs> w- when I was going through this scene, and, like, I-, I feel like I read it, like, a little bit differently, like, mostly the same. But the- I guess the way, like, it sounded to me was that, like, they know that they can't do that. And, like, Titus knows Absolutely. that Xanarchand isn't there. And they're mm-hmm. just, like, doing that, like, fantasy indulgence. You know, they're just indulging Absolutely. in it. Because, like... Yeah. yeah. But, like, yeah. you know, it... Di- different uh, readings for different. Yeah, I feel beings. like the, the the initial reading that I got on it was that like Titus still kind of thinks it's possible and is kind of holding on to that, but you and like Yuna's like indulging him a little bit, being like, yeah, and I'll, I'll see your Blitzball game and everything, because the last time they were here, they had that like you know promise of like doing things together at the end of the pilgrimage and stuff, and I think like Yuna is like, yeah, we could do that, but I know we can't, but I'm gonna you know for like just this moment, I'm gonna like embrace that and pretend she's giving herself a gift. You know what I mean? Yeah, She's giving herself exactly. the gift of the moment to kind of just like be in that fantasy before she has to pick up all of her issues again. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah. I think I think my take on that is I don't th- I think Titus deep down knows that Xanarkin isn't there anymore. But yeah. like, I don't think he's been able to really admit that to himself. So he's like mm-hmm. still going through the whole like, yeah, I'm going to go back home and you can come with me, you know, just kind of yeah. like that childish thing. Yeah. That, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Orin can go back and forth, so you know, it's, probably, it's, it's probably possible. Well, Titus is no Orin. <laughs> <laughs> I have suspicions, but yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> well, anyway, um, so like Yuna is yeah. basically like, your Xanarkin Abes would play, basically indulging more in kind of like this fantasy. And he's like, yeah. He's like, and she's like, we could all watch you play in the stadium, all lit up at night. I cheer and cheer till I couldn't cheer anymore. And he's like, right on. And she's like, <laughs> well, what about after the game? Oh, you know, girl. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> he's like, he's like, we'd go out and have fun. And then yeah, he's like, we go out and have fun. She's like, in the middle of the night on this Christian server. I don't know. Heather, <laughs> <laughs> when you stream this, you called it the heathen hour. <laughs> Did I really? <laughs> really funny. Uh, now yes, I always is... think of that. In the middle of the night, the heathen hour. Yeah, that's like that's like con hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, oh yeah, it's a heathen demon hour. In the middle of the night. Um, but also like, for Yuna, it does have that vibe because she's basically been a workaholic forever, like on yeah. this right. pilgrimage doing her summoner shit. She doesn't know what a night out is like. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. So she probably does think it's like this, like, whoa, partying? Yeah. What? So it's kind of, like, I don't know, it's cute. Her naivety yeah. about that is sort of endearing here. Yeah. yeah she didn't really grow, did she grow up in Bavel with? Braska I think it was Besaid, wasn't it? Yeah, Besaid. she grew up in yeah. Besaid. Yeah, she she was in Bavel. We saw the sphere like about that kind of outlines the timeline because yeah. you know it's probably like I don't know eight eight or nine or whatever maybe at most. Yeah, when Braska went on his uh, pilgrimage, yeah, ten years younger. So if we if we want to say that they're like eighteen or I think I think now. I looked in Titus is seventeen. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so she's probably sixteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, when she was like five or six, they were on their pilgrimage. And then when Orin came back, he brought her back to Besaid. Right. right. So. Wait, Kimari brought Yuna to Besaid. Yeah, oh. it was Kimari. Yeah, but Orin met Orin. Kimari and told him to do that. So, yes, it's, yeah. Vi- vicariously, it was Orin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Kimari, Kimari is always taking care of Yuna. Like, that's yeah. been his, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They had to take the shoe puff over. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she kept falling up. Yeah. So, but either the point being that like she did not have a tr- like a lot of time to like go out on t- the town when she was growing mm-hmm. up at all. No, she was a baby, and then she just got transferred to the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. <laughs> where they raise mm-hmm. wakas. Walk a pill. Yeah. The <laughs> so anyway, oh so like you know, she's all like, "We're gonna go out in the middle of the night," and he's like, "No problem." Xander can never sleep. It's a New York situation, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the sea before the sunrise. The city lights go out one by one. The stars fade. Then the horizon glows, almost like it's on fire. It's kind of rose-colored, right? First in the sea, then it spreads to the sky, then to the whole city. It gets brighter and brighter till everything glows. It's really pretty. I know you'd like it. And then Eunice, so like, nice. yeah, Eunice, like, I'd like to see it someday. And he's like, well, you can. We can both go. And then this is where my Final Fantasy X hurts my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. How dare they? How dare they? Like... <laughs> 
and I, it, ooh, it's the na- the narrative of it is so good because like we we're saying right now we're kind of like indulging in this positive fantasy and they're taking a right. moment to like and like you know if you're in the if you're with it in the game you're like oh kind of like feeling good you know what i mean there's you a lot want of like, that for them you want yeah, it. you yeah, know you yeah. want that to happen right yeah yeah and like at the point where they bring you up to the highest point you know what i mean they just fucking gut punch you right here Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Titus turns around and before you know says a thing, she starts crying, and I was like, "Oh no!" And like the detail on the face is so good too. You can tell yeah. she's just like standing in the water, just weeping. She's got mm-hmm. the Ghibli tears pouring. Yep, <laughs> her heart broke with the rest of us at the same time. I know she totally <laughs> realized, you know, that there's no way she could go. You know, yeah. and that's basically mm-hmm. what she, you know, yells out. She's like, "I can't!" While she's crying, she's like, "I just can't! I can't go!" Oh, dude, you know? the voice acting on that line. Mm-hmm. I, I think that line that she says as well, where she says, I'd like to see it someday. I'm pretty sure she said that the first time Titus talked about uh, Xanarkand and like his Xanarkand and everyone, everyone's like, oh, you're crazy Xanarkand, you know, a thousand years ago and all that. Mm-hmm. But like, it, it's just kind of, it, it's, it's, it's so heartbreaking. Like it's something that she's kind of wanted this entire time, but knows like she can't really get there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because you know, Mm-hmm. She's got to do the final summoning. Yep. Mm-hmm. Save the world and do whatever else in heals like most women are expected. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So that more dead, like older than old, old men, as in dead men, can yeah. continue running everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. It's, like the, it's just like real life, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love this fantasy game. I love this fantasy game that's not like real life at all. Exactly. <laughs> like that's like what we call it, like all of the FF seven season was just like, and then the big corporation does something. Glad real life's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as soon as she says, "I can't go," I can no longer take screenshots of my yeah. uh, switch. We get into I think one of the most iconic sections of this game like is this yeah. is one of the parts i think i've seen screenshots for mm-hmm. yeah um, this is like is... the scene I, I feel like this was on some like cover art as well yeah or, like, this was the first time i think in a final fa- well I, i'm pretty i'm like positive in a final fantasy scene that you've seen such a romantically explicit type of love scene right yeah it was the first time i'd ever seen that as a child they warmed us up with that Seymour kiss. Yeah. And they're like, and, and yeah. like, I know this is a podcast, guys, so you don't know. Maybe you're playing, and so you could see it right now, but they're going at it, dude. They're like <laughs> sucking face so hard. Like, <laughs> theirs is a 16 and 17 year old who's about, like, she's kissing like she's about to die. You know what I mean? Like, she's, she's ready. They're Excuse ready. Excuse me, yeah. kids. Are you leaving room for Yevon? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. There's no room for Yevon in this situation. <laughs> there is no room and for see, this Yevon. And see, this is going to segue into... Pretty wet and wild. Yeah, this is a segue into uh, when I first played Final Fantasy X. <laughs> uh, I was playing alongside my Christian cousin, my Mexican Christian cousin, and we are playing at my abuelita's house, my grandmother's house, in the living room. And this scene comes on. It's like, Sutekitan! And then he shuts the TV off immediately. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? That's the good part. What the hell? You know, and like he shuts it off. And he's like, no, no, I don't want to. I don't want you girls to see this. Because it was me and my cousin Catalina. And then I just remember him turning the TV on and off again because it was still playing and standing in front of us. So I was like, I was like Sutekitan! Iota, we did what? <laughs> you know, yeah. like the song just keeps going. It's so like good. cutting off and forth. So I didn't actually, when I first played this game, I didn't see that scene until my second gosh darn playthrough because of <laughs> Christian censorship. Ruined. I was That's ruined. Awful. It ruined my life. That's why I'm all fucked up now. It's because I couldn't, I couldn't see that scene. That is such a good story. <laughs> oh, my so life's incredible. ruined. That's so good. Oh, good. <laughs> but yeah, Titus initiates right, and uh, mm-hmm. before we know it, we're kind of in. I can't tell if it's like reality or like. A, a kind of a metaphorical dream sequence where they're kind of floating through, I don't know, either both simultaneously the cosmos and the water, I guess. I think it's like the reflection <laughs> of like the galaxy in the sky or whatever, right? In the water. It, but like, mm-hmm. yeah. there does seem to be like maybe pyreflies or something, like mm-hmm. ma- magical lines and orbs. It's like the, the bioluminescent like creatures that are in the sea, you know? Right, right, yeah. right. 
I mean, they're right under that big tree, too, so mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's Light some kind of lore and... reason for how it looks related to that. And yeah. I also think it is like a real life sequence because like when you think about it, they just like chill underwater for Blitzball, right? So I think yeah. the mm-hmm. I think the idea is supposed to be like these humans can breathe underwater <laughs> or something, yeah. you know, yeah, like for so. a certain yeah. amount of time. Or make Can't out underwater. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just going for it. <laughs> Us as game designers, shh. Yeah. <laughs> Stop asking questions. It. It's the power of love. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the power of love. Have you all played Final Fantasy VI? That's with Terra, right? Not me. Yeah, with Terra. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There, there's a scene in that game where they, with sprites, try to explain where like babies come from, essentially, <laughs> like like showing showing the circumstances of Terra's birth, right? <laughs> and and the way in which. Tara's mom and dad are Fuck. able to are able to create her <laughs> is by swirling around of each other with a bunch of lights and sparkly things. And that's they're like, how I that's, fuck. You don't fuck like that's that? That's what it is. <laughs> and so when I was watching 10, I was just like, they're that's Final Fantasy sex. That's what they're doing right now. That's, that's what they're doing. Doing Final, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy sex. That's when you know your game's good. When I was a kid, like I, I told y'all I played this when I was like, whatever, 12 or 13. I didn't really know how sex worked yet. So to me, I hope to find out one day what <laughs> I was seeing on the screen was about as close to what it was as I could yeah. imagine. Yeah. So like, I remember being like, I think for like a lot of, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone in my generation, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who was like, Whoa, this is like the horniest thing I've ever seen in a <laughs> That's video how I game. Felt. Look, I mean, and obviously my I'm cousin felt the same it. way. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, like, and sh- like it doesn't, but it also doesn't really matter if it's sex or not, or if it's just making out or not, because yeah. really mm-hmm. it's just about them it's just like an opening of love. up to each other. Yeah. Intimacy. And yeah. it's so good. I love it. <laughs> so good. So Either good. way, I find it relatable because the cat's watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kamari's there. Always. Uh, it was so funny too. Yeah, it's like after it was uh, done on our stream, I was like, and he was watching the whole time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you walk up to him and he straight doesn't he like straight up smile? Yeah, yeah, I he does. Yeah, like don't yeah. you like walk up to him and like Titus looks Kamari in the face and he's like, hey, bro. They share a fist bump. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they share a fist bump. He's like <laughs> <laughs> uh, one other thing about that scene that always sticks out to me is that and I think a lot of people make fun of the sequence for those scenes where it's like them smiling and their hands touching in like kind of an awkward way people love to make fun of that shit but I actually think it's a really like cute and good way of showing how younger people do actually see romance in that way. That's exactly Like, I don't know about y'all, but... I'm 30. If you play with my hands, I'm excited. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's (laughs) about about intimacy. You know what I mean? Like, it's about the intimacy of it. It's about But also, the awkwardness of... it's This is like a 16-year-old and a 17-year-old, like, maybe even having their first kiss or, like, their first underwater makeout, at at the very (laughs) least. Uh, So the awkwardness there also feels very real to Mm -hmm. me for that mm. specific age, you know? Sure. Yeah, it definitely seems, like, relatable to, like, mm-hmm. those times in, in, like, teenage years. Like, it, yeah. this, this was a really, really good scene. Mm-hmm. It, it really captures the intensity of, like, romance. And it's cheesy intimacy. but effective. Yeah, yeah but there yeah. you go. Cheesy but I, effective. I honestly, I mean, I'm kind of a sap when it comes to this stuff, but I didn't Same. even really find it all that cheesy. Like, I mean, that's probably why I think Final the, the Fantasy... music is the cheesiest part, I should say. Because it does sound like... Wait, that's the wrong one. Uh, I was, the production does sound very, like, karaoke song. Mm-hmm. Kind of because it has that very, like... What would be uh, good for you? Would it would be like... Bow, chicka, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want, I want a Nobu Onetsu boss banger. You know? You should bring back the butt metal from the first episode. Oh, yeah, from like, yeah. from, like, the beginning of the game Damn. when you're in, like, Blitz Boss. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah, actually like a real this. like FF seven boss battle like da 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 like <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm ready for the fan vid. We're gonna we have to make that. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually playing this and uh, like my girlfriend was in the room with me and like n- n- she has like no context for like this story or anything. She hasn't uh, been able to listen to this season or, or play Final Fantasy X at all. So she just heard the song playing and she was like, what's what's going on over there? And she was like kind of <laughs> laughing. I was like, I was like on the brink of tears and I was just like, it's just a nice scene that's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think actually the way the song sounds is really important. Like 
in that it is that kind of cheesy Disney romance music that you expect. Yeah. So I think it's actually really deliberately showing the kind of romance teenagers are expected to like as well. Um, yeah. Because like that, I don't know, at least when I was growing up, like that totally read as Disney movie romance sequence with music. Like yeah. mm -hmm. all the way. Yeah, I could hear I could hear it playing like credits for a Ghibli film, you know, yeah, like, like yeah. the vocal version of the theme laying over while you're already like you're already like just shaking with emotion. Yeah. <laughs> I feel things. <laughs> and I could be projecting a little bit because like, you know, I have a Western viewpoint and this is obviously oh, made in sure. Japan. So they have yeah. different expectations as like teenagers of romance mm -hmm. and different media that they're watching. But I still felt like there was probably something there with that was drawing on that kind of like teen romance material at the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Am I the only 32 year old that thought it was super cute and romantic and I didn't like dislike anything? I did. <laughs> like, I love oh, everything. I like, honestly, this may, this may be a controversial take, but y'all need to get better about your intimacy if you didn't like it. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's I'm, something wrong I'm with 31. you. 31. You may be the only 32 year old that thought that, but I'll be the only 33 year old on this podcast that thought that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm thankful for our wholesome. Uh, audience. Aww. Yeah, we Yay. have like an oddly wholesome audience, I will say, which is very nice. Except me, I'm gonna be on this podcast. I'm gonna like review your Apple like podcast and be like, "Wow, that episode fucking sucked." You guys are incredulous. A bunch of <laughs> yeah. They've never said bitch before. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've already said bitch like ten times in this episode. Sorry. And I, bio oh, no, bitch. That's, we we bio say bitch. fuck all the time to the point where like former guest of the show when he was uh, recording an, another episode was like, yeah, I'm kind of like, he's like, I say fuck a lot and I'm kind of impressed at how much you guys say fuck. I'm like, <laughs> I think we just try and stray away from like any kind of like gendered terms being that we're yeah. three yeah, like, yeah, yeah. cis het. What yeah, guys? <laughs> totally. It's okay. Heather and I can do all the bitch. Uh, yeah, thank you. We, yeah. We greatly <laughs> bitch appreciate it. Handling. Yeah. If you ever need some more F and F bitching podcasting, you just call us up. We'll be there. We'll just Yo, yeah. We'll just have Alex like... put it on a, a soundboard for for us. Yeah, just have us say bitch on a soundboard, and you could just play it whenever you need it. I'm actually gonna say bio bitch all the time. Bio now. bitch. <laughs> That's actually That's my favorite staple. term. Yeah. It is like the, <laughs> you're, you're, you're like Twitter bio or whatever. Is like bio no, we bitch. just gotta yeah. make Nina Marie merch that says "bio bitch," just like the text. <laughs> so good. That's so bio good. bitch. Um, that rules. <sighs> Well, as a bio bitch, I love this scene with my whole heart. And Same. I even rewatched it right before this podcast just because I was like, I just want to see it again. <laughs> I just want to oh. see it because it's so also, good. Now that I think about it, the song, the it, like, its music is like the the piano piece that we hear multiple times throughout the game too. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, like, yeah, it, it's not just a song written for this. Like it's used in mm -hmm. many other sections of the game too. Which, yeah. It's, yeah. it's the vocal version of like the Xanarkin theme more or less. Right. Which is, is it Xanarkin? It's a, uh, um, it's like, or Titus's theme. Maybe. I don't know. They have a lot of similar vibes. You remember um, when they were leaving Luca, it played it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very Final Fantasy soundtrack kind of thing that they do a lot where there's like a certain like the, motif mm -hmm. that repeats. And it then, is a Nobuo like, track. So I did oh, this is Nobuo track. That this makes perfect Nobu sense track. as well. That's why it's good. <laughs> yeah. Damn, why it's Masashi Hama no, 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 no. might I, listen, I listen to our podcast. Why would I? <laughs> no, he's my hero. Nobuo has the memorable like melodic tracks. I he's, feel like Masashi has so really good, good like kind of ambient and kind of sound designing yeah. like rhythmic stuff. That is like, ooh, this is like cut some kind of future sci-fi vibes, but like nobody's yeah. got the good stuff that like the worms. It's all yeah. good, but it's it's it's. I think it's the nostalgia for me. You know what I mean? Like he has yeah. a certain sound. Uh, no, what yeah. Nobu? I think I, I say if I said it right. I'm yeah, Nobi Nobi boy. Nobi boy. <laughs> Nobi Nobi BB. He uh, <laughs> yeah, his uh, his music is very good for me. I, I think even like ten two didn't he like move to Hawaii or or ten? I think he like. I read there a rumor somewhere it's like 10 or 10 to like he moved to Hawaii to kind of like get the vibe of like tropical areas or something. Maybe. I, I'm not sure actually. Oh. Yeah. I'm looking it up now. I can't find anything, but that's we're, we're going to say that. Uh, yes. 100 percent true. An actual <laughs> fact. It's true. Oh, We've not actually, been too concerned with like <laughs> reality. On this I actually heard that. I just realized I heard that at a Final Fantasy Orchestra concert. That might not be why it's on the Internet. The conductor was yeah. speaking and he said that. Uh. Yeah. I, I, I like to think that right before the conductor uh said that he like 
leaned over to the cello player and is like, "Yo, I'm just gonna make some shit up and see how many people." Die. <laughs> yeah, I really hope he did. I really hope he did. I'm gonna fuck with all these nerds in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am now, like four years later, on a podcast. Yeah, so that's kind of like. I like to think of it as like what Adam Sandler did late in his career where he's like, yeah, like I don't really care if my movies are good anymore. I'm just going to like write one that's set in Hawaii so me and all of my friends can just go and like <laughs> chill in Hawaii for three months and get paid for it. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like to think Noboa would do that. <laughs> it's for research. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I got to get some seagull sounds. <laughs> Just play Spongebob music in the background. <laughs> yeah, this game is lacking in pedal steel. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, after the, the song ends and the scene ends. Which is called in English, uh, I mean in, in uh, Japanese, it's what? Suteki dane. Suteki dane. Which it. is literally means, isn't it wonderful? So um, good. Aww. No, Yuna's about to die. It's not like <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing, in the nothing scene is, is wonderful, wonderful at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> Walking in a Yevon Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when the when the next scene starts up, they're kind of they're both uh, sitting on the edge of the uh, the pool there they're on the right? beach on the yeah on the on the beach of it. <laughs> There's um, a name for that. <laughs> uh, and Yuna says, "I'll continue. I must." If I give up now, I could do anything I wanted to. And yet, even if I was with you, I could never forget. And like, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that line so much. It's so Her good. Her integrity mm -hmm. is amazing. Like, it it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. In the face of like absolute death. Yeah. Let that be a lesson to many young women out there. Like, don't throw your whole your values away just for a dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. the other thing that I love to take away from this is, you know how there's, I think there's an, like a, it's a stereotype that like, you know, the girl will follow the guy for his work or whatever. Yes. This is reversed. Oh, Titus yeah. is following yeah. her That's for right. her work. Yeah. I, <laughs> Which, again, Final Fantasy, I think it's Final cute. Fantasy is usually good at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be a stay at boat dad. Stay yeah. at boat. Yeah. Yep. Stay kind of very dad. similar to to like in Final Fantasy VII with all the stuff of like, oh, we need to go in, we need to go and rescue Tifa, or like Cloud being like, no, Aerith, you can't do this. I'm gonna protect you and stuff. And the entire time, Aerith's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then she's like, no, I do this shit all the time. I'm completely fine. Yeah. Like, right. I'll let you think that. And then like Tifa being like, you guys are about to blow my cover. Like, what are you doing here, Cloud? Why did yeah. you come and try and save me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's Love really it. like it was a nice thing to see as a kid. I remember being really like moved by Yuna's dedication and her singular focus and the fact that she wouldn't just give up anything for love because it is like sort of like I mentioned like Disney princess kind of stuff as yeah. what we were sold as like kids as right. good love stories it just I don't know it felt like the kind of love story I hadn't yet seen at that age yeah. and it felt really new to me and inspiring and more relatable than the other kinds of like fantasy love stories I'd encountered. It was so, different. Yeah. It was something that yeah. was different that we've never seen, you know, like as women, yeah. young it's, women. It's nice so far mm -hmm. playing at yeah, these 3D uh, Final Fantasies. The ones I've played so far, there's never really been like the, you know, most fantasy games have the princess that needs saving and all these. These are these are princesses with jobs and they have shit to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're fucking doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we are just there to help them get there. Mm -hmm. But they also can have love at the same time. Like you can, you know. Yuffie only loves material. Like have a complicated character like that. Yeah, she you really have, have to. One to dimensional. I mean, life is like that as well. It's good to see those type of examples in our media mm -hmm. because like love is like that. Like sometimes your partner takes up a little more than you do. And that's mm -hmm. just life. Your genders are irrelevant in capitalism. Mm -hmm. So like. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind <Fuck>. of. <laughs> I would say it's kind of scaled in one direction unfairly. Yeah. It, it is it is definitely scaled unfairly. I will I will revise that, but like yeah, at the same so, time sorry about that. they're all coming to get us whether or not what you know. Goddamn right. You know mm -hmm. who we are, so we, you know, as a good relationship. I'm glad one podcast finally stood up to capitalism. That's right. <laughs> Fuck you, you capitalism. You could say that like 
if a woman brings the next column, it's only going to be about 73% effective. <laughs> I only get paid. Like, She's only going to get paid 73%. They're only going to get 73% of, of the credit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. Yeah, it. It'll, yeah. Be, it'll be 100% effective, but they'll only yeah. get 73% yeah, exactly. of the credit. Yeah, yeah. It'll be 150% more effective, but they'll right. only get 73% yeah. of the credit. And they're going to be, and yeah, they'll only get 73%, and then people will be like, why didn't you do this better? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> why didn't you do this and not, why didn't you do it and not die? Yeah. <laughs> now I have to miss her, that selfish bitch. <laughs> she could have smiled more. She could have smiled. Oh, 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 no. yeah. That one podcast actually made me over. Mad. Podcast over. Yeah. <laughs> I think my I think my actual vagina got angry there. I'm not sure. <laughs> parody. Parody. Oh, I know. I know. It was just the triggering thing, you know. It was just like. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> So anyway, yeah, Tanya says... Yeah, would be fucked up if we talked to his star. I was like, no one ever ta- asked me to smile. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Titus says, I'll go with you. I'm your guardian. Unless... And he like motions to his neck and he goes, I'm fired. <laughs> so, uh, I loved that. <laughs> That's very <laughs> cute. Fucking hilarious. Which I learned something very interesting recently. That uh, the the word in Japanese for to be fired is like kubi ninaru, which is like to be necked is like <gasps> what it means. So I was just what? like, oh, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, unless I'm fired and like does that and like the symbol is neck for it. Those I uh, read that Whoa. scene as uh, he was, he thought, you know, was going to assassinate him because he knew too much. Uh. <laughs> Send his ass. <laughs> I've only seen her with one of her boyfriends and she killed him twice. So. <laughs> It's just hot girl shit. It's hot girl shit. <laughs> yes. Can't talk right now doing hot girl shit. She says, stay with me until the end, please. And Titus says, not until the end, always. And she goes, always then. I was like, oh, it's so good. Extremely good. And that's mm-hmm. when Kimari smiles very creepily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that when he smiles creepily? I thought yeah. they just came out the water and he was like, <laughs> right. cats are so horny. <laughs> they would never fix Kamari. <laughs> <laughs> it would take away all of his his man juices, right? He's hornless though. This is no horn run. <laughs> yeah, Listen, need to be the horn horned. doesn't make the man. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Um, I thought it was a metaphor. Is all. <laughs> uh, she she sends Titus first. She says, "Hey, maybe you should go back to camp first, right?" And like, I, I think I get what she's saying, where she's like, "Yeah, if we both walk back to camp together, maybe that would be kind of awkward." All, or something. all, all our friends will know that we kissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. But after she sends him away, and Titus gets up and says, "Roger," and starts walking off, she actually gets up and goes, "No, wait, actually, I'll come with you." And I was like, "Ooh, like I don't know." Just, yeah, just, let them so know. <laughs> I lo- no, There's I love actually it. something I love funny. It. There's something funny you can do as well, where like when you're Titus, like you have to walk a little bit, and then that that scene triggers. But you can try and walk back to her, and like I was like, oh yeah, let me see if she has yeah. any extra dialogue or anything. And I was just like on an invisible wall, like yeah, running game, in place, like, like couldn't get to. Oh, I hate when they you. do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like cloud in the forest, <laughs> turning <laughs> yeah, yeah, to oh, run, yeah. but I can't go nowhere. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> um, and then what I like is shit when she walks up behind him, he starts to walk away, but then she like slowly slips her hand in there and like they're holding hands. And I was like, oh, it's very, <gasps> it's very it's good. It's very good. It's very good. Yeah, it was good. You loved it. She is such the type to always take the initiative and they like remind you of that all the time throughout yeah, the game. Yeah. And that's such a good example of yeah, it. Yeah, I like how she was just like, you know what? Let them know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. This is my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good for oh her. boy, um, yeah, mm-hmm. so good. But they walk back to the camp, and and even though we just saw that Titus arrives first somehow, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like I, I, yeah, I guess in the inner room they were like, no, wait, actually, maybe not. Um, but Titus shows up and uh, kind of walks to the back of the party. He just like gets in line with the rest of the party. <laughs> And because uh, Yuna walks up and is about to address everybody and she does everybody by name. She like literally is like Sir Oren, Waka, Lulu, Kimari. And like and like it's it's clear that they're all different takes, too, because there's like <laughs> differences in somebody's voice. Aren't they you know playing I mean? like the silly, the silly da, 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 like music in the background, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like trying to make it him being just like, hey, guys, I just. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you can especially tell i feel like when she says kimari because like mm-hmm. it, it comes out very angularly it's really interesting sir oren waka lulu 
Kamari, Riku, everyone, we leave at dawn. And I'm sorry for putting you through all this. Yeah, she, and she does the Gomenasai bow. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's uh, getting ready to continue, and Aaron just says, enough, you need your rest. And, like, Yuna is the type to apologize over and over and over about everything. So, like, I appreciate that Aaron's just like, look, it's it's fine. You you should just rest now. Bro, just shut up. Like, <laughs> 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 like it's fine. Go to sleep. Yeah. But then we get bid good night, and the scene comes up, and it's the next morning or afternoon or whoever, whenever they get up, the sun is. You guys out. remember that saying good night to that person after that first kiss, and then sleeping in a tree like Riku. You know, you're always it's always really good. It's like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our friends will be in the same room. <laughs> 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 but um yeah it's the next morning and i like like there's like two camera angles in this one room and i like the the initial camera angle like uh we can kind of see um the front of trees on the left and the right side of the screen and all the action is like taking place behind it and you can see like Oren get up and some other people wake up and then like titus wakes up out from under one of those trees like he kind of like emerges from behind it and then the camera angle changes, and we're looking down on everybody, and we can see that Riku is asleep up in one of the branches of the tree. And I was just like, it's "So good, <sighs> Riku's fucking so good. She's the <laughs> She's shit. so cool. Riku's the best legend. character in this series Dude, for me. I think I, love Riku, I really love yeah. her. Her love and Yuna. Riku. Yeah, she's like the uh, again, like the Yuffie, where it's just like I love this little little girl. Just she's like the Yuffie, scamp. but Yuffie was a little shit. Like Riku is at least a little, <laughs> like you know, like she's the, kind of nice. We said she's like the posy Yuffie. Yeah, she's like I, the kind of like little shit. Like, God damn it. <laughs> I loved Yuffie in FF7 because she was so antagonistic. Yeah, like if I went to middle school with Yuffie, I might fist fight her. Like that's how <laughs> <laughs> like, trying to steal my stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was like, it was like you just like have your own little like miniature villain on your team. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, She's stealing my shit. Yes, yeah, but then we're allowed. Yeah, she yeah, never right. refills the Brita. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps drinking all the oat milk and not replacing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we're allowed to to leave the area, and we can. I mean, you can if you want to walk around Makalani, I suppose. But you don't have to. There's a chest, though. Yeah, there there is a chest. <gasps> there is. I didn't get what it was, though. It's funny because like there's a, you by the cutscene, you actually leave the area and you have to walk back into the where you just came from to get the That's chest. Right. Yeah, what like you that? see it when everyone walks out, and it, it's got a lucid ring in it, mm. uh, which it's fine. Oh, I did get that because I looked up what it does, and it prevents confusion and silence. Oh, that's actually really good. Yeah. Oh, totally. um, nice. Also, just now I learned reflect, so I have that in here too. <laughs> I like looking at my notes. Nice. I'm like, oh, then I got reflect because <laughs> of all the points that Seymour gave us for leveling up. Yeah, yeah but, and yeah. that's all I really have for this area, right? I will say yeah, if I we think so. if we take a take a right that's not really right if we walk to the east um we'll be in the next area and we get one of those indiana jones maps pops up again mm -hmm. a little plane i love on. the map oh, it's so good, good. Mm -hmm. um but right at the entrance there is a save point and that's where we're going to save and end the episode today is right there and the the Heck next yeah. episode yeah. will be in this area the calm lands the land of the calms we saw the name of something on the map as well we saw the did. calm lands and after that a nice little place that sounds very inviting called mount gagazet i'm, I'm excited sure to check that place out good stuff's gonna happen <laughs> stay tuned everybody so anything else about uh the area or the scene before we get to closing thoughts i think it's just my favorite my favorite scene yeah. Like besides the airship squall and Renoa romance scene, yes, oh, you know? I love that. Yeah, that one's my very first favorite, but this one is a very close second because yeah. just the the emotions that they're able to get through um, yeah. through yeah. the scene is just kind of amazing. I really digged it. I feel like it does a good job at like casting this kind of environment for the rest of the game too, because mm -hmm. like it, up until maybe Makalani at Temple. Like, everything's just very, like, monster of the week. Like, here's this section, now this section. And, like, there, there's only a couple, like, connective tissues between it, I feel like. And maybe not a... Like, learning about the politics of the world. Yeah, the and there's not, yeah. like, this emotion on it, I guess. But, like, there's this weight on us now. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the gravity of this situation now and, like, 
not just the the characters places in the world but like the way that they truly feel deep down has like been revealed to us at this point so like the rest of the game every every minor thing that happens has to now be filtered through that context and i mm-hmm. think that's like the best thing about this this section of gameplay right mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like too often the like the love story is saved till the very end. So I appreciate right. that it in this game they present it early enough for you to be able to have that experience as the player and to like have a love relationship in mind as they make choices throughout the rest of it. It adds a lot to the game, I think. There's more to relationships yeah, so. than kissing and fucking. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like There's summoning. A- yeah. <laughs> there's there's coming back with the bio you know yeah. like. <laughs> in games too often especially in the AAA level sex or love is the reward and in this game it's absolutely not it's just a part of the story and it's something that happens naturally like yes. during the course of it and yeah. I think that's really cool about this game and kids always remember to cast protect <laughs> yes. Always cast protect. You know, I, I think the first game that I ever saw do anything like this was maybe Xeno Gears, which when I was in high school, mm. my my girlfriend at the time played Xeno Gears all the fucking time, right? And she's like, Oh yeah, there's this scene where the two main characters have sex, and I was like, No, they wouldn't have sex in a video game. Because like I was like, I was young and dumb, right? And I was like no, that that can't be. And I would like be like that. I'm I'm certain that it's not that. You're thinking too far because I was like I couldn't fathom that a video game would like present any kind of romance during the game. I couldn't even fathom yeah. that. Like that was like so out of my brain. Because like no, romance happens off screen after the credits. That's that's mm-hmm. where that happens. You know. Mm-hmm. And so like the princess isn't in another castle after the credits. Roll. Yeah, she takes right, her right. petticoat off. You know, like <laughs> yeah. Well, an important thing about the Xeno series, if you don't know, this is that it was originally like written by a married couple. Yeah. So, oh. like, I think that that le- lived experience is probably reflected a little bit in the game because yeah, a couple so. wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Importantly, uh, well, not this is not a Xeno Gears podcast, but importantly, Ellie's um, gear changes names after that scene, and the first gear means virgin. <laughs> but anyway, oh. sorry, the name of it. lore yeah. oh. can't relate. <laughs> 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 Go listen to Retrograde Amnesia if you want more Xenogear stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little shout out. What a, good, what a good scene. And yeah, I, I think I like what you said too, Nina, about it like kind of being towards like the middle that they kind of fell for each other, you know? Mm-hmm. Feels natural. Yeah, I feel it's we're going to see how like everything plays out with their feelings because it would be mm-hmm. different if it wasn't, I think, you know, different mm-hmm. dynamics. Mm. And yep. I like that the like, especially for the end of this episode, it ends with the whole group together, too, because yeah. even though like a lot of this was really about Yuna and Titus's relationship, they're also having a relationship within a group supporting Yuna. And it does come back to really her relationship with the whole group and the fact that Titus is a part of that supporting her, even though they have this special thing going on. Ultimately, it's really more important that they're all in it together. And I think this game revisits that idea a lot as well. So it feels key that they return together, holding hands, honest with that whole squad. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I like it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Are you saying that it's Suteki? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you both for coming on. This was yeah, really this was awesome. This was Absolutely. so good. Absolutely, I'm so Yay. glad. Yeah, yay! Thanks for having us. It's it, it would have been super. I mean, we would have done it regardless, but I feel like, I feel like it's nice having different perspectives, especially during like a romance section. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what this what this means for like different demographics, not just mm-hmm. a bunch of you know just dudes, dudes. playing games. Yeah, you know what that lady <laughs> probably felt. Asses. You know, I bet that lady probably felt. You know, it's like no. <laughs> but and, wait, so did did are all of you experiencing this game for the first time right now, or did any of you play it when you were kids? I, I have. Yeah, played you played it, it when oh, okay. you were younger. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, both Carl and I cool. are newcomers. I was gonna say, I feel like that childhood experience of that scene also really is like a different thing because <laughs> you see it differently as an adult. Well, now I was an emotionally stunted child, so <laughs> so at the well, time, like I mean, regardless of your life experience, like the way you see it as a 
kid is going to be yeah. different from when you're an adult and seeing yes. it for the first time when you're like in your 30s or whatever. So yes. I enjoy like the different age perspectives on this game as well. It's okay, Curtis. Right. I'm an emotionally stunted adult. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys for having us. It's been so fun. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, this is super good. Um, do you have anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, I know plug you away. Both stream if... independently and together. Buy Nina's games. Yeah, buy Nina's, <laughs> Nina's games. I'm Aww. going to tonight. Thanks, Speaking Heather. of games made by or about couples. If you love romance games, which you should. Like again, if you don't love romance games, I'm going to I'm just going to be controversial and say you have some intimacy <laughs> issues, all right? <laughs> and and also you judging. should buy them anyway. <laughs> I'd be judging, all right? So just go buy her game. <laughs> well, buy her games. For, since this is a Final Fantasy podcast, the game I worked on called Sybil is again about my time playing Final Fantasy 11, so maybe relevant to uh, listeners' interests and or life experience. I'm sure there are some of you also really addicted to 11 <laughs> like I was. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's like a big Final Fantasy specific thing for me. But otherwise, I stream on Twitch at Nina Marie. Um, N-I-N-A-M-A-R-I-E. I'm on Twitter as Persicom Nina. Uh, and my site is oh, yeah. Nina says dot so. Shout out to Chobits. Hell yeah. <laughs> Show them your Chobits tattoo. <laughs> I do have a Chobits tattoo. Yo, oh, you won't be able yeah. to see it, really, but it's chi. Oh, Basically, what chi. I'm saying is Nina Freeman is the coolest bitch I know. All right? <laughs> so how's you, oh. Heather? <laughs> Miss, Miss Finji. For those who don't like romance, uh, <laughs> Titus was just doing a Russian taunt to Yuna. Yes. Oh, good. Titus was just teaching <laughs> Yuna how to play Blitzball. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> they, were, they were studying the Bible. You know, yeah, like, they, were reading, yeah they were yeah. They were the reading Bible. the Bible together. Ah. That when they black when the screen blacks out after they were kissing, they're like, "All right, let us read our royal, royal? our holy when scripture." The, <laughs> when the when the screen blacks out when your cousin turns off the TV, it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. The scripture, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the scripture. So. Yeah, and I like the strobe remix of this of the song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can find me pretty much on any social under Mix Sass Blast, MC Sass Blast. Uh, I stream also oh, yeah. twice weekly on Twitch, and uh, yeah, by Overland, you can find that on. You can find all our games on Finchy.co. Um, and yeah. Oh yeah! Thanks and for of having course, us. Finji is responsible for Night in the Woods, which Curse or that was uh, Carl successfully <laughs> speed mm -hmm. ran for GDQ, which is nice. Cool. Yeah, I think that yeah, that mini game Adam Adam Saltzman like made that like he like yeah made that yeah thing. yeah it's pretty awesome. So awesome. Anything else we want to say, guys, gals? Titus and Yuna forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully on board fun as well. with the rest of the game. Yeah. That was the one thing they should have had in that scene is just like the, a cutaway to the tree and they like fucking etched <laughs> in their hand the fucking tree. It's probably yeah. wholly yeah. full of Pyreflies tree and just... How can we make this <laughs> even cuter and cheesier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. They would I'm, do that. I'm, I'm disturbed by the I, idea I that want them to do that. <laughs> I'm disturbed by the idea that there could have been like actual Pyreflies too because like they just like form into a fiend like, <laughs> like an Ochu. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the just the start attacking on. them. Yeah. <laughs> Or like no, but it, but it ends up being it ends up being very like Disney, right? Because like it turns into an ochu that has those little pools in their like top flowery thing, and they just like ah, like lay in it. And there's and like, like and there's like a, a red crab singing off the tree. That's right. Know? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> playing a xylophone. Playing a xylophone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds just like Waka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Um, I'm going to do the housekeeping now. Cur curse usually leads me in. Alex, make out with us in a, <laughs> a fucking <laughs> swimming pool under the stars, baby. I can't wait to see your guys' fan video. I can't wait to see... <laughs> I can't wait to see your guys' like poly da -da 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 -da. Uh, FF10 cosplay dudes making out <laughs> under the water... Uh, yeah. music video. Hell it's going to yeah. be good. <laughs> but to the <laughs> opening like metal song. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be Sid Kid. It's going because yeah. it's manly, you know. Like. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, really, because it, if it's involving me and Carl, it's going to have to be eyes on you or eyes on me, eyes on me, <laughs> eyes on me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. oh, man, God, I love that I, song. Look, look, I'm just saying, like, not to for anybody who's listening to the podcast who hasn't played all the Final Fantasies. I know we go on about FF8 all the time, but it's because it's the best game. 
So Teki Dene yes. is a yes. banger of a tune. <laughs> Eyes on me, though, can never be defeated as like the and ultimate the lore romantic of song. Eyes on me is also in the oh, game. Oh, God, it's the yes. lore's oh. in the game. <laughs> yep. So yeah. you can't. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Can't beat it. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be assassinated, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right alex (laughs) um yeah uh what else happened during this episode alex what is this podcast still doing alive quick (laughs) Ah, there we go all right thanks tonight around for the theme music nobuo uematsu masashi amauzu and junior nakano for the game music uh rate review subscribe if you can uh call us at 530 materia and tell us your stories of when maybe when your family members in the same room when this scene happened (laughs) Uh, find us at every f and ff at all the things and you guys, we podcast with our skins intact. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey everyone, Carl here. I just wanted to do a quick plug for an event that's happening uh, pretty soon by the time this episode's coming out. We didn't get a chance to talk about it in the main podcast episode, so I'm kind of just recording this after the fact. But on Saturday, January 23rd, I'm going to be doing a Dark Souls speed run for a charity that is being hosted by MagFast. Now, that sounds a lot like MagFest, and I just wanted to, in the interest of transparency, kind of talk about what MagFest is in association with MAGFest. If you're familiar with MAGFest and anything that's been going on with MAGFest, um, there's been a lot of really, really heavy stuff happening with MAGFest at the highest level with like the board members and it's it's rightly something that should not be supported any longer, which is very heartbreaking because uh, for anyone who's ever gone to MAGFest, you know that the board like has nothing to do with what the spirit of MAGFest is. However, Unfortunately, it's one of those things where it kind of is what it is, and, you know, it, it, MAGFest has unfortunately become something that isn't really worth supporting anymore, and there's been a lot of stuff going on with it in recent years that have kind of led to this point, and uh, it, it, in that respect, MAGFest is more or less a completely separate thing. It's a panel that is organized by people outside of anything that is going on horribly at MAGFest and 100% of the proceeds are going to the charity that we are raising money for. And not only will I be running at this event, but also a friend of the show and former guest Ninnies is going to be closing it out with a really, really awesome Hollow Knight randomizer run. Uh, If you've been able to catch any of his streams with that, it's absolutely mind-blowing to see it's going to be a really great run and it's going to be raising a lot of money for child's play which uh, i'm just going to read from their website here uh since 2003 we've set up and organized child's play a game industry charity dedicated to improving the lives of children with toys and games in our network of over 185 hospitals worldwide over the years you as a community have answered the call and come together to raise millions of dollars so basically it's just a charity that provides toys Toys, video games to kids who are in hospitals. It's a really amazing cause. Um, definitely one worth supporting. We kind of had a lot of deliberation going on about this because when we heard about MAGFest, we submitted pretty much immediately and we're very excited about it. Um, Nins is someone who's worked MAG staff in the past and has, you know, been a part of like the 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 kind of people who make MAGFest great. And um We were really excited about this, and then all the huge news kind of came out about MAGFest as a whole, and we had a moment of being like, okay, well, we we have to drop out of this run, right? Like, it sucks because all of it's going to charity, but Nins actually did an amazing job of vetting everything and making sure that everything's on the up and up. The organizers are not connected in any way. Uh, It's going to be streamed to MAGFest, so that's M-A-G-F-A-S-T. Gonna be that's the channel that it's gonna be on. I think the only connection here with Magfest is that it might be hosted on the Magfest channel. I'm not even sure if that's gonna happen or not. So hopefully this kind of clears things up because just given everything with the situation, it's a really bad situation at Magfest. Uh it's the kind of thing where like 
unfortunately, I'm probably never going to be ever going to MAGFest again. You know, uh, everyone's kind of just in a whirlwind over this, and it's, it's a real bummer. But rest assured, uh, we would not be doing this if there was any kind of connection to anyone who has been doing the, the horrible things going on at, at, at Maine MAGFest. So hopefully that is something that you guys can support to help raise money for charity. I'm excited to, to raise money for this charity, and yeah, I, I, I look forward to the run. And yeah, thanks so much, everyone.